Welcome to the CKW Stadium for Wolves win match today against Nottingham Forest in the second round of the FA Cup. Kickoff is just 10 minutes away now. It's a beautiful, sunshiny afternoon, and we're live on Wolves TV, YouTube, and the app for the very first time. Now, we haven't seen the Wolves win team in action since December when they beat Stourbridge 3 0 in the first round of the FA Cup. This tie was originally set to be played in January, but of course, due to COVID restrictions has been postponed until today. But this week, the Wolverhampton team were reunited in training for the first time in 2021. And we're here ready back on the pitch again today. Now I'm joined today by a familiar face to a lot of you at home. Wolverhampton midfielder with 230 appearances to her name, Jen Anslow. Thank you so much for being here today, Jen. It's a pleasure, good afternoon. Now, of course, the past year has been a difficult one for everybody with the coronavirus pandemic, but the girls in Wolverhampton's team have had a particularly difficult time. How much does it mean to be back on the pitch today? Yeah, as, as you know, we've had two seasons curtailed now um, in similar um, ways, you know, top of the league and yeah. looking as if we're going to win the league and uh, having it pulled from underneath us. So, as you can imagine, they felt defeated again when we heard it for a second time, what was going to happen. We've still got the FA Cup, which we were really, really pleased yeah. about for something to work towards as well. Um, but the girls have, have kept uh, upbeat and uh, are really excited about today's fixture. Yeah, how do you think they're going to be feeling in the dressing room at the moment? I'm sure you know more than most how that feels. Yeah, excitement, <laughs> a bit of anxiety, um, going through what they need to do. You know, they haven't been on a pitch, as you say, for four months. 
Um, it's a perfect setup, though. Perfect game, you know, against a really strong opponent. So I think it'll be a really, really good game. They'll be up for it. Well, the team had a really strong start to the season. And in their league matches at the beginning of this year, they were unbeaten in all of them with an aggregate score of 37 goals to three, which is absolutely phenomenal. Are you looking forward to seeing that talent back out on the pitch today? Yeah, we've scored loads of goals this season. It's been great, really assured performances. And most of the goals, you know, have come from a lot of different players with our strikers getting the lion's share. And it's really nice to see that um, we were so confident coming back after the, the previous season, you know, to prove that we could do it again. Um, so yeah, definitely, I think there'll be a few goals in this today. Well, the last time we played Nottingham Forest was actually a few years ago in the league in 2018. It was an emotional day, last day of the season, trying to fight to survive relegation. You yeah. played in that match. Yeah. What are your memories of that day? Oh, it was an amazing day. It was hotter than this on a 3G in Nottingham. Um, we were looking to score as many goals as possible for, for the goal difference. Um, I think we were on 5-0 and I was still asking the photographer when I was taking a throw in how many more we needed to score based on other games that were going on around the country. And we were pushing and pushing, and I think we needed 7-0 in the end to be able to, to get the goal difference yeah. right. So it was, it was unfortunate because we fought really hard at the end. Yeah, being able to get a 5-0 win, though, was a fantastic, fantastic day. And that was actually not long after Maka took charge of Wolves Women. Yeah. How much of an impact has he had on the squad? Oh, incredible. From the tiniest detail with regards to, to Kit and, and how things are set up and ran and the team he's got around him to, to working with Wolves and developing um, the Wolves Women side of things and the liaison with the club and pushing it as far as it can go and, and never settling for anything. Um, the coaching sessions and the staff that he's got in with the coaching and the expectations for the girls and um, what we get for that is it's just incredible. He really has done an incredible job and I actually got to speak to Dan McNamara uh, ahead of today's game earlier. Dan, after almost four months without a game, how much does it mean to be back on the pitch today? Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, we're, we're really excited, really looking forward to it. Obviously, a beautiful day as well. Um, so, yeah, it's just uh, amazing to be back with the group and uh, have a competitive fix to look forward to. Do you hope that today's match is a positive sign of the return of football for good? Yeah, I think we all hope so. Yeah, I think right across the country, not just football, I think everybody uh, across the world just wants a bit of normality. So, um, yeah, hopefully, we, you know, we're, we're really excited. We're looking forward to getting back on the grass. It'll be a really tough day, but, um, you know, we, we're just delighted to be back and, and, and that's the main thing. Well, yes, today's opponent is Nottingham Forest women who are in the league above Wolves women, but we did have a fantastic start to the season. Are you feeling ready for this challenging opponent? I think as, as ready as you can do when you've had three and a half months off. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's an equal playing field, as you say. Forest have been in the same boat as we have. Um, but, yeah, as you said, they're, they're a fantastic side. You know, Andy Cook's got them playing fantastically well and, and, and they were expecting to do really well in that tier three last year. So, yeah, as I said, it, there's no pressure on us today. We've just got to go out and, and, as I say, enjoy the occasion. You know, they're, they're the ones with the expectation placed upon them. So we'll enjoy it and take it for what it is and, and, and see where we go. Absolutely. Now, with the league obviously cut short, unfortunately, for another season for Wolves women, how much would a win here today mean if you if you could get one? Yeah, it, look, you, you never want to go into football games and not win them. You know, it it's, uh, doesn't matter what's going on with the football season. You know, if it's a friendly, we want to win it. If it's a competitive game, we want to win it. And uh, the FA Cup's a fantastic fixture. You know, uh, uh, it's it's brilliant to be a part of it. And it's a little bit different this year, you know, we carry on we carry on going, you know, as long as you can keep winning, your competitive season carries on. So it's a little bit different and, and, and we'll enjoy it and and yeah, let's see what see what four o'clock brings. Now also earlier today, Anna Price was presented with a shirt to commemorate her three hundred appearances for Wolves Women. What an incredible achievement for her. Yeah, she's a, a legend, yeah, club legend. I think she's absolutely fantastic, you know, not just what she, she does on the pitch, what she brings to the whole club. Uh, you know, she's uh, a real advocate for, for Wolves and she deserves that success. And, you know, she's not stopping yet. I think she's 304 today, so, um, yeah, 400 maybe. <laughs> that would be incredible. Thank you so much, Dan. Good luck today. Cheers, thank you. <laughs> What's an absolutely incredible achievement for our captain. Now, you've, of course, played with Anna for a number of years now. You must have some incredible memories playing alongside her. Oh, yeah, so many. I mean, we started at 11 years old, so despite not being around at university times, we've played together ever since. Um, so, yeah, we've had uh, amazing experiences. She's a fantastic captain, a uh, great role model. Um, yeah, so perfect all round, really. It's great to see her still playing and 300 appearances. Just fantastic. She's done really, really well. And, of course, she's an amazing captain as well. What does she like to play under? Oh, fair, firm. <laughs> um, put you in your place if you need to, but is very, very supportive. 
fantastic for the younger players coming through and great with the older players as well. She's just perfect all rounder really and a great friend. Yes, a great friend, well, which is fantastic. And as you can see, the teams are now coming out behind us. Anna is actually celebrating her birthday this weekend as well. So that presentation really is the perfect gift. It's time now for me to hand you over to our commentary team of Mikey Burrows and legendary Wolves player, Claire Hakeman. Well, after a frustrating 112 days without a fixture, it is glorious sunshine for the return to action of Dan McNamara's side here at the CKW Stadium in Castlecroft. And McNamara able to name a relatively strong lineup, though he is, of course, without the experience of Natalie Whittle. But there are still plenty of experience in there, including, of course, Anna Price celebrating that 300 match landmark and the goals no doubt will come from number nine Jade Cross Claire Hakeman she has been in prolific form for so long no doubt will be the danger woman today yeah definitely I think there's um, a lot of pace in attack for Wolves uh, Jade Cross and Ali Miller will be um, a huge threat to the Forest defence we're expecting it to be a 3-5-2 formation fairly similar to what Nuno's side will try and do but a little bit unusual today with Larry Walker going to be playing on the left hand side we'll come to that in a moment as we look at the Forest ladies line up there's a, quite a lot of youngsters we expect to be in amongst it although at least one name that you'll have played against before yeah Lindsay Harkin I believe she had 200 appearances um, in recent weeks I believe I've played against her a few times uh, over the years Sally unfortunate that in the match program today was dredging up some disappointing memories for you of a recent meeting yeah um to be honest until i read the program it's all come flooding back i gave away a penalty in uh, a game where we lost four nil actually in the last time we had an outing in the fa cup so um that's one one not to remember chloe matthews and we'll have the whistle in the middle for this fa cup second round action we mentioned larry walker normally much more of a tenacious central midfielder playing, we expect, on the left-hand side today, Claire. Yeah, I mean, I think she had a bit of an impact, actually, as left wing-back um, this season. She's second top goal scorer for Wolves women, so she'll be a huge threat down that left-hand side. So it'll be interesting to see how it pans out. You mentioned Jade Cross and Ali Miller up top. There are options off the bench as well. Jamila Palmer might be a name known to a few, having been the player of the season last campaign. Certainly for that last 15, 20 minutes, perhaps absolute rocket of a shot on her. Yeah, she's a fantastic player. Uh, set pieces and, and shots from distance. Uh, I've seen her score a few goals over the years, so um, she'll be definitely one to watch out from off the bench. What will Anna Price be saying? in that huddle right now? Oh, I think Perksy will be just giving it. Everyone needs to get out there and enjoy the day. I mean, it's fantastic to see uh, the girls back on the pitch after a frustrating couple of seasons for them. Um, but she'll be getting the girls going, and I'm sure they'll all be buzzing for today. Do you think there'll be an element, perhaps, of having been frustrated for the last couple of months and then let loose this week back in training that they just got to make sure they, they keep themselves level and don't go too hard too early. Yeah, definitely. I think, I mean, they've got to stay calm and play the football that they know that they can and um, hopefully they can get a result today. So we are just about ready to go here at the CKW Stadium, live on Wolves TV. A historic occasion to be showing Wolves women for the first time and hopefully we'll be seeing them go through to round three it's been a difficult last couple of years in terms of the fa women's cup walls not got through to the third round since 2015. i don't believe they've beat forest at home either no it's not been a great run against their rivals from the east midlands and here's george trying to get wolves off to an early start and they'll go comfortably through to asia aguire in the nottingham forest goal yeah, I think it was a good start from Tammy, to be honest. Uh, she's tenacious in that centre midfield area. She'll be one to watch, uh, hopefully get her on the, the ball in attacking positions. Just over the top of Walker. Nice little drag back, though. This is Price, although you may hear her referred to as Perksy throughout the afternoon. It's a habit we can't drop, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> you and I both, for many years, that's going to come towards us almost. Big clearance that just rattles off the roof of the stand. Oh, I was in then. 
<laughs> Never good to try and get a header with these headphones on though, Claire. I was thinking that. I have had to do that once before in a uh, senior men's game away at Bradford a couple of seasons ago. I had to save Andy Thompson from a <laughs> gigantic clearance from Ethan Ebanks Landell. I love that. Nearly clattered into him. We'll throw down the line. It will be a Wolves ball. I think Anna Morfitt there on the ball. She's taking the throwing down this left hand side. She's a huge threat on set pieces. Um, fantastic pass, that, a range of passing that she has. And I know she's um, um, an impact player in terms of like, uh, the corners and, and free kicks as well. So it'd be interesting to see her get into the game today. How will they try and settle this down and, and find their rhythm early on? Well, I hope. I mean, they play very much like um, uh, the men's side in terms of wanting to get on the ball, play out from the back. Um, I think if they get a little bit of possession in there as well, uh, it'll help settle the nerves, which I'm sure will be here after such a long gap from playing football. Morfitt will take the throw. He's got Price just in field. George has made a run as well. It goes towards Miller. Didn't quite get the flick on. Big, huge clearance to try and deal with. It was Emma Cross who was challenging. Wolves will also get the benefit of the throw as well. I think the girls just need to get the ball down on the floor if they can and, and get their confidence up with a, a little bit of the passing that we know they can do. Yeah, just settle themselves back in, I guess, after so long. I know there was a little bits of training games in the week to try and get ready. There's Cross, that's a nice touch, and trying to set Walker away. Did well to keep it in initially. With a good turn of speed to get down that left-hand side. Yeah, I think there's quite a lot of pace in this attack. I think Jay Cross was integral there in setting Larry Walker away. So I think that'll be a combination that we see throughout the afternoon. Incredible. 146 goals in 169 appearances for Jay Cross. She, she's I immense. Um, I think uh, I'm remembering from training in times gone by and matches, you never really wanted to play against Jade. She's got so much pace and ability. Opportunity, though, for Forrest to try and burst forwards. And the tracking run, trying to hold them up. Danger not fully cleared. It's a difficult ball in, but well claimed out of the air by Beck Thomas. Yeah, I think that was really good play from Summer Holmes in there. She managed to uh, slow the pace of their attack down and, and kind of reduce the threat a little bit. So, But good hands from Beck Thomas in the end. It's got to be a little bit wary, haven't they, of the, the speed of the counter-attack that Forrest showed there. Yeah, I think it'd be one to watch. I mean, Emma Cross in the centre of that defence, obviously twins with Jay Cross. They've both got something in their game, which is uh, pace, pace, unbelievable amounts of pace for both of them. So... Um, I'd expect her to get back in and try and mop up any pressure that appears. Wolves try and work their way down this right-hand side. Forrest trying to get themselves organised. Those gold shirts looking resplendent in the sunshine. It's a hanging delivery towards Miller. Did well to get the initial challenge in. And it was Jade Cross who was flying in there in a little turn of speed that close down that forest defence. Yeah, it's a nice little combination between Miller and Jay Cross in there. I mean, both pacey. Uh, Ali Miller's not the tallest, but she managed to get up and, and win her flick on to Jay Cross for the edge of the box there. Always talk about strikers working in pairs and trying to complement each other. I think they're tried and tested. I think they've done quite a lot of work on, on this combination uh, up front for Wolves. And obviously they do have Jim Miller in the wings as well to come on and add a little bit of something a little bit different to them. Moved forwards by Holmes. This will be George trying to work it wide for Nia Edwards. It's not a bad ball in, you know, and Miller couldn't quite take it, but Harry Walker was arriving. Difficult one, a little bit of a bobble before it got to her. Strong header by Morfitt. Miller, nice turn. Trying to get that driving run and continuing on. It just got away from her at the final moment, but excellent work by Tammy George. And this attack is built up nicely. Real composure by there, by Summer Holmes again. I've been really impressed by the bits that I've seen of her in recent weeks. So, um, again, two really comp composed moments for her. And Holmes doing her defensive duty to Beck Thomas. 
So plenty of experience in amongst the youngsters in this Wolves lineup. Kelly Darby once captained Nottingham Forest. Beck Thomas in goal had two seasons with Forest, only returned at the start of the last campaign. Yeah, there's a there's a bit of a ex Forest contingent here with um, Amy Dickens on the bench as well, and obviously Summer Holmes was there, and they're strong players. Re really, uh, they played at Albion, went on to move to Forest as well. So, Forest trying to get themselves moving through Rosie Axton. It's been forced a little bit wide by Cross. Does have support. Wolves got the numbers back there to deal with it. And calmly moved up to Tammy George. Trying to use her speed and clearly being held back in the end by Laura Jane O'Neill. Yeah, that's what you want from uh, Tammy George in the centre of the park. She's driving away. She's she's so pacey once she gets going. So, um, I mean, it was probably a good fa good foul from the Forest perspective. But Tammy George, well, you want to get her on the ball as much as you can in that final third. She was a youngster when you were still playing and it's had a year away or so at, at Spurs. Yeah, I mean, she's massively tenacious. She she loves a tackle, Tammy George, as well. So um, she's definitely be a threat in the centre in Wolves midfield today. On to watch out for as we go through the action. It'll be launched forwards by Derby. And it was Cross trying to get in round the back and it needed Angie Aguirre to get out sharply. That was a tad too straight, maybe. Yeah, I think so. I think they'll be looking for that diagonal ball. Um, Kelly Darby taking that that kick, but obviously with the pace of the two forwards, I think that might be one of the angles that they take. I mean, the defence was pretty deep then, so there wasn't much space in between them and the goalkeeper. Forest throw. Morfitt with the challenge on Axton. Ball absolutely smashed into Anna Price. I don't think she'll thank Emma for that one. <laughs> Thomas to try and launch it forwards towards Edwards, just a bit too high. You see the thumbs up from Dan McNamara on the far side, though. He's done a pretty decent job in the couple of years he's been in charge. Yeah, definitely. I think um, Mac has come in and, and, and really made a big difference, and the professionalism that has come along with it um, has really made a big difference for the girls and uh, attracted a lot of quality players. Um, so, but he's done a fantastic job, and I'm sure sure that will continue into the next few seasons. Just give us an idea of that, Claire, because it is difficult, isn't it, uh, uh, at this level, especially of women's football, to to get people to come and play when when they're not being paid. Yeah, definitely. I think the the impact that Wolves getting involved with the women's section in the last couple of seasons has been a massive boost. Um, not just financially, but the things that they've offered in terms of training facilities um, and all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. The Wolves women have got great staff, so when people are balancing a job, it's a high level of commitment. Uh, the, the girls are not paid, but yet they have to give as much commitment as, as a men's team would. George on a strong run, and it's Miller to try and strike it. Not a bad effort. It's just trying to help it on its way towards that bottom corner. But again, we saw the driving power of Tammy George. Yeah, I mean, it's nice to get a shot on the board, isn't it? I think there. I think it will boost Ali Miller's confidence as well. All showing some early signs of promise here at Castlecroft. Our watchers will know it as officially the CKW Stadium. We were down at pitch side before, Claire. It's not a bad surface, a little bit uneven maybe in parts, but should hold up pretty nicely if a bit dry maybe. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think all of the players would take being on any kind of pitch uh, after the last few months that they've had. But uh, it's a di it's a great facility here, and um, the staff are always fantastic and really welcome into the women's section, which is fantastic. Edwards putting good pressure on here and force a little bit of a mistake that Miller might be able to capitalise on. Cross game the challenge of Lindsay Harkin. Edwards again, looking for Miller, maybe just a little bit hard to her down the line. Yeah, I think it was a couple of uh, loose touches there from Ali Miller, but she's getting in some great positions and she's pacey enough, so hopefully as the game goes on, ch more chances will come to her. Just a little bit of an issue, I think, and yeah, Beck Thomas is down in the Wolves penalty area. Wolves goalkeeper, so that's why we all have a little bit of a pause and maybe an opportunity for one or two to head over and get a drink. 
Yeah, that'll be a huge concern there this early on, having Beck Thomas down. I mean, she's a quality keeper again. She's one of the ex-Forest contingent we mentioned before, but um, hopefully it's nothing that she can't uh, carry on with. Yeah, interested to see what that was from. Has only really been involved on that one moment where she claimed across really well. It looks like there may well be much more of an issue, perhaps with the left knee. It's being stretched out. We do have Millie Conard on the bench. Yeah, I think I was actually at the game where she got called back as an emergency <laughs> last year. I think um, she's one of the um, youth youth player keepers that's come in to play for um, Wolves Moomin. has done a fantastic job, full of confidence. Um, but, I'm, you know, it's difficult when you're a keeper, isn't it? I don't, don't know whether this early on you're really prepared to come on in a game as big as this is. Yeah, Beck Thomas is stretching things out. I think the signal appears to be that she will be okay. We'll be one to keep an eye on as we progress here. Forrest may well just have a look at that. I think it's worth just testing her out. Yeah, definitely from a Forrest perspective, you, you'd think that. I mean, inevitably for both sides, I think fitness levels are going to be massively important today after only having been back together a week. Um, also, the fact that they've had four months off, it's a, you know, people are going to be rusted. There's a chance of people getting niggly injuries as well. So um, hopefully that settles down for Beck and she's op OK to continue. I'll say they had a couple of training sessions this week. Try and get themselves going. And Dan McNamara talked about the players trying to do as much as they could via Zoom and their own fitness plans over the last couple of months. I know he would have liked to have had a couple of official friendlies before this one. Yeah, I think they've been reliant on Zoom calls um, just to get them by and then literally six days of training before a massive game that could pretty much be the end of the season for them. So, um You talk about playing against a team from the level above as well. Forrest hadn't had a great run of form before the season was curtailed, but it's one of those elements, isn't it, where when you're at the, the level, effectively tier four of women's football against a tier three side, I know Dan McNamara was keen beforehand to play this one down a little bit, maybe keep expectations in check and... Yeah, I think, I mean, I don't think the girls need any added pressure on it. I think they all know that this is, you know, if they don't win today, then obviously the season in effect is over. But on the flip side, exactly as Dan says, the girls shouldn't be under pressure because it's the pressure should be on Forrest to, to win the game today and, and less so Wolves. But I'm no doubt Wolves can compete. Lovely skills from Tammy George again and trying to set Jade Cross away. And she has the speed, but not quite enough to keep up with that ball. Yeah, I think Nia Edwards might have been the better move there. I mean, she did some great skill in, in the first place, Tammy, to get, get on the ball there and flick it over the defender's head. But... Um, I think the right wing back Edwards had, had come wide. She'd have been a great one to, to then drive forward. George again. It's a little bit of a heavy touch, but also pick up on it through Edwards. Holmes finding Tammy George, and it opens up. She had cross to her right. And she'll find Larry Walker. George again having a go. And again, not a bad effort from a difficult kind of distance and maybe under a little bit of pressure too. Yeah, you could see the ball bobbling around a little bit there, couldn't you, as well? So um, difficult, one, difficult one to control on her left foot on a, a weaker side, really, but she got her effort away. Good header by Price. Lifted forwards again. We've got Emma Cross to deal with. The tennis, Sydney Naylor. Under pressure from Summer Holmes. Forrest turn to try and work something, but look at the effort from Wolves. Closing down and pressing. I think that'll be the game plan. They're like We're out of possession, real go for the heavy press early doors. I mean, fitness levels will come into this as we go through the game, but I think Wolves have made a decent start here. Good ball. Jade Cross has Miller making a run through the middle. Not too much other support arriving just yet. Cross trying to force a way through herself and continuing on. And... It was good refereeing, actually. Yeah, I think Jade did brilliantly there, didn't she, to hold the play up, uh, wait for some options to join in, and then manage to win a free kick on the edge of the box. Excellent work. I just saw that Forrest just got a little bit exposed. 
talked beforehand about the pace of the two up top. Frightening for any kind of defence. Oh, it's the, the last thing you want to defend against uh, is pace. Um, I, I know that very well. I've been trained <laughs> against Jade for a number of years. Well, you used to be a flying winger back in your day until you converted back. Yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> the, the flying winger days are long gone. Opportunity from the set piece. Also quite away on the far side. It's not a bad hanging delivery. And Aguirre came absolutely crunching through to manage to hold on to it. Yeah, there was a, it was a bit of a lofted delivery for an anamorph. It, um, I think the keeper read that pretty well, to be honest, and not many Wolves players were in the uh, attacking the ball. It's interesting how far away the Wolves players were, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Just a lot of it. Miller playing it forwards. Again, Aguirre is out there quickly. The Wolves have spent a good period of time pressing Forrest back in this opening period. Yeah, I think Wolves have made a really good start here, really positive, some, some nice bits of play in there and very tenacious. Crunching challenge came in from Holmes again and Cross trying to get in behind. Yeah, great great play there from Lowry Walker as well to win that ball back. But Summer Holmes is, uh, I mean, she, she loves a tackle as well. There's, uh, but she's so controlled and calm when she does get the ball under pressure. It's a strong screen, isn't it, in front of that back three that maybe is allowing Tammy George just to go and get involved. When you know you've got the protection of Holmes and Price behind you. Is Price winning it in the air? Boards by Naylor. Walker couldn't quite hold on to it, but has managed to follow up. Miller in. Strong challenge from Harkin. It'll be a forest ball. Yeah, I think she was maybe after a free kick there, but I don't think there was much in that, to be honest. Not a bad start at all against the side from division above. Crosses clearance. It's caught a little bit late there, and not for the first time. Wolves will get a free kick eventually, but there's been a couple of challenges where Forest player has just left a little bit in there. I think they're kind of trying to leave, probably put, put Jade off a little bit. I mean, they know she's pacey, and if she does get, a t get, get your turn, then it's going to be a foot race. Uh, to the ball, so I think they're trying to make sure she knows that they're there. Classic defending. <laughs> I've, I've spent many years doing that. <laughs> so says the woman who was stressing beforehand how you're delighted there's no VAR at this kind of level. <laughs> yes, oh, it's fantastic to watch a game without uh, VAR. It's... Um, it's great. I think it's it's proper, I mean, it's grassroots football, but it's also high quality of football as well, and it's great to see the girls um, being put on this stage by Wolves TV as well. It's cross again. It's been involved an awful lot. Holmes trying to deliver one into the penalty area. Walker maybe could have pushed up, but he was always going to be asking a lot to get on the end of it. Morfitt using her strength on accident. Bravely in by Tammy George. Yeah, I don't think Tam Tammy has no fear. Um, she's a great player. Be more fit. Try and lift it in the direction, perhaps of George with Miller and across just to the other side. Does go towards Tammy George and again trying to get in amongst it and cross spotted where that was going to go and put enough pressure on just to hurry the clearance. Walker has done really well. Powerful run. Cross has support from George. And a little crunching challenge came in from Charlotte Greengrass. Yeah, great bit of play there from Wolves. I think Larry Walker did fantastically there. It's a great feat to get her through into a good position. It's a shame Jay Cross didn't have a little half turn there. She might have been able to get a shot away herself, but I don't think she realised she had as much time as she did. I know you've seen plenty more of them in training especially. What's this like for range in terms of anamorphic? Oh, it, this, is, this is easily in range for anamorphic. Uh, set pieces are fantastic. 
Um, scored a number of goals, po possibly not the season that's just closed, but the season before that she was uh, a, a massive threat in this position. Three and nine for the season, 15 and 41 before today. And it will be more fit to have a go for goal and the goalkeeper just took a little step to her right just before it came round the wall. Yeah, unlucky really. I think I'm, you know, if it had been to the left or the right of the keeper, she she would have been in, in trouble there with the wall hiding it slightly. But uh, it's a it's a decent effort, a, a pretty easy one, comfortable one for the keeper to save though. Just made sure she got it on target, didn't she? Really, asked the question very yeah. much. Yeah, for sure. Hopefully she's lining the next one up. Uh, but I think it's been really positive from Wolves. I think um, they've had some nice bits of play in there. They've really settled now into the game and uh, we haven't seen too much threat from Forrest so far. Challenge going in again from Holmes. George read it more. Spaces to try and switch it to this left-hand side. Walker's initial ball. Just cut out and Georgia Hewitt will try and work it down the line. Little flick in field by Haley James, but a cross came Price. Holmes for George. Again, really good footwork. Wanted the free kick this time. Nothing given, and in went Price with a crunching challenge. It's pretty, pretty brave from um, Perksy there. I think she's a bit unlucky, to be honest. Chloe Matthews. Referee, much like Anna Price's challenge. Here come Forrest once more, difficult one to deal with. And good to see Beck Thomas is moving okay after that earlier injury scare. Yeah, great, great um, goalkeeper. She read that really well, didn't she, Beck Thomas? I mean, she's a quality keeper. You can see from uh, her kicking is fantastic as well. Miller's work to keep the ball alive. Walker for Morfitt. Trying the crossfield delivery towards Edwards. Strong header away by O'Neill. Here's Miller, a little bit more time. Drops towards Tammy George, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I think she was unlucky there. I don't think she could do a, a great lot about that, but um, still a great position to be in and, and, and lots of positives to take so far. Say it's unfortunate that couldn't be a crowd in today, though Jeff Shee is amongst the onlookers. Oh, that's fantastic, isn't it? I mean, it shows you how far we've come to, to have this level of interest for the game, and uh, it's fantastic to see. I can I can literally only see things getting better now for Wolves women. Um, uh, it would have been a glorious day to have a, a full crowd in today, and I know that there's a lot of people that are getting behind the women's team. Uh, lots of Wolves fans that have been turning up to games in, in, in recent years, so um, hopefully that will only grow year on year. Jeff, she was part of the pre-match presentation you short saw on our build-up to Anna Price, and I wish people could have seen the, the look that Anna Price gave you as she walked past. Delight to see that Jeff Shee was here supporting. As Emma Cross wants to you know, shepherd this behind. Oh, she's, she's an absolute legend, Anna Price. It was actually her birthday as well yesterday, so it'd be great if we could complete this weekend with a, a, a win for her today as well. But she's a, an absolute legend, like on and off the pitch, such a lovely person as well. So I can literally can't say enough about her. Yeah, remarkable, the sheer number of years that she's dedicated to this football club. Yeah, she's, she's fantastic and... Uh, like I say, she, it's, it's not just the contributions on the pitch. She's, she's almost looks after all the players, the squad, and she's always been integral in encouraging uh, young players to come through. And obviously she, in her day job, like myself, is a, a PE teacher as well. So, you know, it's that balancing act of, of, of being a footballer as, as well as obviously uh, holding down a job as well. Yeah, wonderful piece with her and a couple of other players at walls.co.uk. And you can read it right now on the Wolves app. Talking about the time and how, as captain, wants to show how inclusive this football club is. Let's cross. Walker. 
Spotted George had made a little bit of a run. It needed the challenge of O'Neill to come in, but look at Miller again, tenacious, keeping the ball alive and fancied having a go. Forrest just had the numbers back in there to block. That's unlucky in there. I think Tammy George was trying to flick it on to Edwards as well behind her. I think she'd read that really well. And again, brilliant play from by Ali Miller, really lively. Just that little final ball that we're looking for now just to get a few more chances on goal. That's a lovely take. And ball in field by Naya Edwards and Miller again showing the strength and here comes George just seems to read the play really well Walker fancy to go from distance and block came from Hewitt Price and Holmes to recycle Look at the space for Edwards time to set herself yeah I think Naya's got into some great positions I mean she's a really young player herself so um, so she's she's a, a really one for the future Walker, by two Edwards, just a little bit of a heavy touch, an awkward bobble maybe. Yeah, there's definitely been a bit of that, hasn't there? Uh, I think you've noticed probably, I mean the pitch probably hasn't been played on for a long time either, so, um, and the fact that it is pretty dry out there, it's, it's, it is fairly bobbly, difficult for the players to control at points. Naya Edwards, just 19 years of age, actually got a squ scholarship to Queen's University of Charlotte, North Carolina. I think she's delayed. Yeah, I believe she's deferred that. I mean, she's a fantastic player and um, it is a great opportunity for her. But equally, I think the opportunities now that girls have to, to stay here and, and pursue careers to be an, a footballer is, is equally fantastic. So, um, but yeah, fair, pl fair play to her. She's come through the youth system and it's great to see her playing first team today. That's Ali Miller down, just getting a little bit of treatment at the moment. Talk about your teaching career there's quite a th few of this wolf squad who are combining playing football with studying quite a few have gone through wolverhampton university amongst others there's quite a few at birmingham university i think yeah i think i, I noticed on on the stats i didn't realize actually how many of the girls were were together at birmingham university i mean i'm guessing some of them are playing for their women's team as well so they're probably getting uh, a bit of extra football in there but um, lo I mean, lots of these girls are either balancing studying along with um, holding down a job. Um, I know lots of the other girls, um, obviously some of them are students still, so it's tough to balance the commitments uh, to play at the standard and then uh, still turn up to training twice, three times a week, maybe Zoom calls, bit of extra fitness sessions and on giving up your whole day on a Sunday as well. So, But this, is, this tells you because this squad is quality and um, if this season would have carried on, I've no doubt they would have gone on to win the league. Well, we mentioned Ali Miller getting a bit of treatment there. She actually took a year out of the game. PhD in chemistry at Birmingham Uni. And she was also the 2013 National Trampoline Champion. Wow. Let's see, she was jumping pretty well for that header earlier. So, you know, that goes hand in hand. I can see that's integral. Can't believe you're still in my lines already, Claire. Unbelievable. I'll tee him up. So you knock him out of the sorry park. Sorry, mate. Yeah, I'll just keep. <laughs> I'll keep finishing it off for you. That's where all that research pays off. Hey, I've been reading these notes religiously, <laughs> religiously. Here's George. So we've done well to win another free kick as well. It's been she's really impressive. She's yeah, she's causing them some problems, isn't she? She's um. Definitely mixing it up in there. She's she's a difficult girl to play against because she keeps coming back. She you know she loses the ball, she'll win it back. She'll be back in your face. So um, she's definitely one of the big threats I'd say for Wolves women today so far. Morfit wants to try and throw this one into the area again. It's like Derby has gone forwards. Yeah, this one suits uh, Anna uh, quite well. I'd say being an in swinger from left hand side. Holmes and Price furthest away on the far side of the penalty area. Morfitt swings it in towards goal. It was an awkward one to deal with for Major Aguirre. I think Kelly Darby was ready there, wasn't she, to pounce if she uh, spilled it at all. So keeper did well there. Emma Cross showing good reading of the game. Bounced off Nair Edwards will be a forest throw. Here come Forrest through Axton. It will be a Wolves ball. 
mean, we haven't seen masses of threat, have we, so far from uh, Forest in that, that final third there. I mean, I don't want to obviously <laughs> ruin the moment, but they've been doing pretty well, Wolves, um, in terms of holding the possession in the centre of the park and then pushing on to attacking into the final third. Yeah, how confident will they be as to the way this has gone so far? Yeah, I think they'll be growing into the game. and They look like they are. They're, very, they're becoming more composed on the ball. Uh, lots of people getting touches. They're winning the ball back uh, frequently from Forest. So it's only going to improve their confidence as the game goes on. Price. And drawing Morfitt into it. Good football for Wolves. Morfitt just selling the pass a little bit short and they allowed Hewitt to step in. Yeah, it was unfortunate that because Perks are doing a great job of switching the play back out to the other side and it's a promising start. Clear that all that extra hard work and training this week paying off and at the moment showing little signs that the enforced break has had too much of an impact. Yeah, I think the, all the players seem to be holding up well and you know, it's a tough one in terms of the intensity and the, the, the pressure that they're probably putting under themselves in terms of the moment and making sure they're not overawed by the moment of, of the first game in, in four months. Oh, needed to try and deal with it. Or if it was trying to hold it out, but look at Summer Holmes again. Great strength from Summer, wasn't it? Setting Edwards away. There's a big bit gap of space to try and carry it forwards again and a clever ball to find Miller and Miller fancied having a go it was just had to wait maybe an extra millisecond for it just to drop down yeah it just didn't quite sit up for her did it I was expecting a, a, a big volley in there but it just kind of bobbled away from her but it was great play from Wolves again another chance another shot on target uh, so I think they'll be pleased with how it's going so far yeah, showing a bit of ability there just on the counter attack whereas we've seen them have to be a little bit more patient at other times. George again with a foot in. Gets it back from Cross and Edwards is in space on the right hand side. Cross making a run through the middle. George still carrying it. Here's Naya Edwards. That's a dangerous delivery in just too far ahead of Jade Cross. Yeah, I think that was unlucky. I mean, you could see the ball bobbling, couldn't you, as it was running down the wing there. It was a, it was a pretty difficult one to get a decent ball in, but I think they did really well. And that's another ball that's won back by Tammy George. Price and Holmes combining. Walker trying to set Cross in behind. And look at the speed. Oh, goodness me. Big decision just outside the penalty area. Olivia Cook committed herself to it. Oh, th there's something in there. I'm not sure she might have been the last player. That's Ooh. such a tough one there, isn't it? Because if it's, not a, if it's not a penalty, if she stays on the pitch as well, that's... Uh, from Wolves' perspective, that must have been very, very close. Well, Chloe Matthews had a long old discussion that suggests that this is going to be yellow rather than red. I mean, she was through without the tackle. She's through on goal and she's getting a strike away. She's one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. I think... Ooh. Olivia Cook getting that yellow. This is where we need VAR, Mikey. <laughs> I'll take it all back now. Well, real question there, because it, you're right, I think she was the last one through. I mean, without the benefit of re replay, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but Jade, knowing her pace, she would have got a shot away on goal. She was in prime position. She was on her left-hand side, but she'd have no doubt made the keeper work for it, I'm sure. Yeah, cutting in, I think, was that initial touch, wasn't it, that got it yeah. away from Olivia Cook. And that's totally the pace of Jade Cross. That's why she's so hard to defend against. Larry Walker and Anna Morfitt stood over this. It would suggest from the angle that it's more suited to Larry Walker. Yeah, I would suggest that. I mean, a right-footed player swinging this in. I hope the girls follow this one in, and um, it's a great position for a free kick. Morfitt, I think, was probably asking the question of Chloe Matthews there as to whether that should have been a red or not. And something else has gone on. Chloe Matthews, the referee, is just head over to have a word with the assistant on the far side. I'm guessing this is something that's going on in the bench area, perhaps. Yeah. Maybe the question's been asked by Dan McNamara about um, her decision, perhaps. 
Yeah, Dan McNamara getting a bit of a talking to right now. I think it's fair enough to ask the question, but uh, I mean, he's, Dan's probably a long way from the incidents, but even we're in a great position here and she looked like she was through on goal. I can see that there was another player there and don't get me wrong, if I was Forrest, I'd be fighting for the other way, but um, I think that could have gone either way. Yeah, I think the initial reaction, wasn't it, was is it in the penalty area or not? And yeah. then once that decision is made... You could understand if it was in the area that the card would be yellow. Yeah. So I think it was a genuine effort to get the ball. But given the scenario... I mean, if Wolves score the free kick, we're, we're happy, aren't we, I suppose? But Looks like it's Walker to have a go. A little deflection off the wall. Unlucky. He's certainly travelling. They use that feeling of being a little bit hard done by, maybe. Yeah, well, hopefully they can use it for motivation. I mean... You know, considering there's a division, these teams are a division apart. I don't, I don't think we've seen any evidence that Wolves are the, the lowered, lowered place team. So uh, they've made a fantastic start to the game. Whipped in delivery, Derby was going in, but oh, claimed out the air by Aguirre. It's a great ball that is from Anna Morphy, and that's the set pieces that she can really deliver. And in fairness to the Forest keeper, she's held on to everything so far, hasn't she? You could see it was one of those just. Just inviting for players to go and throw themselves at it. Yeah, I mean, it's a shame we couldn't have got somebody running across her eye line, really, just to nick in front of her. But it was a great delivery. They were unlucky, but the keepers, keepers held it well. More fit with a throw. Towards Miller. You get a second chance to try and play it forwards. More fit with a clever one in field to Walker. We just switched positions with George for a moment. Holmes' his clearance closed down. Opportunity for Axton to carry it. Got support from Hayley James on this right-hand side. Well positioned by Price again. It's a great header from Perksy to get the ball away. Oh, excellent work by Miller as well. And look at the pace of Cross again, causing all sorts of issues. Jay Cross with a big opportunity. Oh, couldn't quite find the bottom corner. Oh, so unlucky, isn't it, from Jay there. She got into a great position. She's causing havoc back there. She just didn't quite connect, did she, when she had the chance to shoot? But uh, she still got into a fantastic position. Great play from Ali Miller as well to slide her through. Yeah, it's almost like you can just put it into a certain area and you know that Jay Cross will get in amongst it. Oh, 100%. I mean, she doesn't even need to have possession of the ball. Give it to the defender and she'll still win it back. Came from a brilliant bit of defending by Anna Price as well. Yeah, I think that was one of the probably more promising moves Forrest have had in the game. But again, came to nothing. Perks got the ball away and then uh, came down the left-hand side with Ali Miller. Miller couldn't quite get on the end of that one. Holmes, though, first the loose ball. Jay crossing with the challenge. It will be a Wolves throw. Watching the first ever Wolves women game live on Wolves TV, powered by Energy Angels. Maggie Burrows and former Wolves women, Claire Hagman with you this afternoon. Three spells, wasn't it? Yeah, three spells over a period of time, two kids in the middle, so it's been a busy few years. Here's Cross. Support coming from Derby. A switch in the direction of Walker. Here it will chase down the clearance. James let that run and it allowed Holmes just to get a little bit of a foot in. Good positioning from Tammy George and it's opened out for it. And no hesitation to drive on. Closed down by Cook. Comes to Edwards. Looking for Walker again. Got through some kilometres already, Larry Walker. Yeah, definitely. I mean, she's she's involved in quite a lot of the action that we've had so far, isn't she? Price for Walker. Lovely touch. George will take it on. And again, Forrest getting the numbers back into block. Oh, I think it's by Edwards. Sorry, Claire. Sorry, even when um, Forrest have got in some decent positions, I think Wolves have just caused, managed to win the ball back. Um, just lacking a bit of quality, Forrest, really. 
Holmes with the challenge. The thing I really like about Tammy George there is you saw that moment where the ball was dropping and she was shaping to try and volley. Just wants to have a go for goal anytime she can. Yeah, she's so attack-minded. I mean, that was always one of the big threats in her game was um, when she's running at people with the ball. Um, and obviously, she's, she's got a decent strike as well. So she's she's got a few goals um, over the years so far. And she's still probably only a youngster. <laughs> only 20. Two goals this season in nine appearances, but nine in 36 overall. She's got a, long, uh, a decent future ahead of her. We didn't play as much at Tottenham as she would have wanted, hence the return. I know the travelling was a factor as well. Yeah, but that's uh, it's positive for Wolves, isn't it? And um, I think she knows that Wolves, the setup uh, is only getting better every season. So um, it's great to have her back with Wolves. It's a little bit of a pause in the game as there were two issues. I think it was Laura Jane O'Neill getting herself back into position. Cross trying to hold it up. Edwards challenging. It's been a good first half performance so far. Just haven't quite got the goal that maybe their players deserved. Yeah, I think they'll probably be a little bit disappointed. They're not, not going in 1-0 um, one, one up, to be honest. Um. Here's George. Again, causing issues. She was suggesting there might have been a bit of a hand in there, but they'll settle for a corner. I think it gives Anna Morfitt another chance to put a decent ball in the box, and hopefully um, this time somebody can get on the end of it. What do you make of this setting up a long way beyond the far post again? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing this is something they do practising training. I mean, bear in mind they've had four months off and they've had six days of training, so I guess it's been pretty tough getting all the set pieces sorted as well. It is Morfitt's delivery, and it's gone deep towards Price, and it was George who got ahead of to it. Unfortunately, it was just a bit far beyond that far post. Yeah, it was obviously a, um, a tactic that they've used, isn't it, to go quite quite deep on that one after the last one was more of a near post corner. Set pieces could turn out to be oh so important, and walls have been very threatening from there so far. Well, Anna Price has um, scored many a goal off a, a corner or a set piece. I mean, she's she's a great threat in the air, attacking wise. Thomas's kick that will be a Wolves throw again. You can see Dan McNamara trying to get them moving quickly, but Mary Matthews wanted them to go back a couple of steps. Always the frustration. Miller. In bravely once more. Cross will chase it down, putting real pressure on Cook again. I think she'll be happy for half time, won't she, Cook? I think she's had a torrid, torrid first half there with Jay Cross chasing down everything. It's the tenacity, isn't it? That just never seems to lack energy. Just anything that's in and around it will never give it up until yeah. it's absolutely gone. And that's yeah, that's Jay Cross example of why she scored so many goals as well and this time crunching into a challenge putting pressure on O'Neill I think the defenders bought that a little bit but yeah um, I mean Jade's had a great first half hasn't she she's been a clear threat on goal and probably been involved in the main action of the first half well there isn't a fourth official on this game so we won't know exactly how much is going to be added on at the end of this half, but we are in added time. Good header forward by Price. Here's George. Again, space to just drive on, and she'll happily do so. Once more, Forrest getting the numbers in amongst it, but maybe time for one last set-piece opportunity. Yeah, it'd be great for Wolves to close this half with a goal. I think they've deserved um, to, to score at least, really, in this first half, and um, I think they've probably dominated most of the first half once they're settled down. Yeah, it's always that element, isn't it? Because Forrest will surely have to come out and be a little bit different second half. And try and counter some of the work that Wolves have been doing. 
Yeah, definitely. I think um, it'd be interesting to see if it, it either team makes any subs with fitness. Maybe we'll start to come into it in the second half. Well, it was making a short run, but Moffat will surely deliver this in. Big bank of players beyond the far post. Didn't quite reach them. Miller, though, trying to keep things alive and a little bit too keen, perhaps. I think it's probably... Um, being a defender myself, and that's a good good foul, to be honest, in there to sort of close the play out. Um, last thing you want at the end of the first half is them coming on a break. Too much longer to be added on. Maybe time for one last attack. All up towards Cross. It's going to drop for Edwards, who's just switched with Walker, it was a nice ball across Miller, who turned but couldn't quite get her balance right, I imagine. I think Wolves just seem to be picking up all the little pieces in beyond, so every time there's a header, or a free header or anything that drops down, it seems to be falling to Wolves, and I don't know whether that's because uh, the quality or whether it's that Wolves want it more, but I think they've, they've done a, fa a fantastic display uh, in the first half. And again, Price again dominant in the air. And for a second time, cross with the flick on, he'll nudge in the back. Not very happy enough with it. Edwards was challenging. Holmes, not for the first time in this half, tidying things up. Yeah, she's been solid throughout the first half. I think she gives them a nice bit of stability in there in the centre of midfield. Wrong one that's turned more fit. Cross getting it across, James trying to lift it in towards Axton and the offside flag had gone up, but it was really well read by Kelly Darby. I think that's probably the uh, most threat there that Forrest have had there right at the end. Yeah, really impressive from Wolves in that half. Quite a few decent half chances, you would suggest, from the edge of the penalty area. The big moment of controversy, Claire Aikman, that moment where Jay Cross got in behind, taken down by Olivia Cook, just on the edge of the penalty area. She got a yellow, should it have been red? Well, I think if it would have been red, that would be a whole different story now when we've spoken about fitness levels. If they're down to 10 men for a whole of the second half, um, I think they'd have been fighting a losing battle second half. Forrest, as it stands, they're still in the game. And you can see, so dominant in terms of the stats in that first period, looking dangerous from set pieces as well. Who really stood out to you in that part? Oh, I think there's a number of players. I think Jade crossing behind the pace that she's has has been a real threat. I think Forrest have really struggled with her and Tammy George, the amount of times that she's won the ball back and dri driven on to try and set something up. And obviously, probably Anna Morfitt as well with her set-piece deliveries. Dan McNamara, what do you think he'll be saying in that dressing room? Oh, I think he'll be, um, he'll be speaking to the girls, telling them to build on what they've done so far. I think he'll be probably telling them they probably should be 1-0 up and maybe that might roll the girls and get them going into the second half. Hopefully they come out and just do exactly the same again because they very much deserve a goal and hopefully it'll come in the second half. And see just how many efforts and how many are on target as well. There's quite a few blocks in there. We saw early on a couple of opportunities where maybe the girls were just snatching at it a little bit. Yeah, I think so, and I think there'll be a bit of nerves and a bit of rustiness because obviously they haven't obviously been playing for like four months, so it's a, it's a you know, you, you're not expecting the quality to be fully there, but uh, I think they did fantastically well first half. Tammy George, one that really stood out. Just the tenacity and the desire just to carry the ball, the confidence just to go for it. Yeah, she's still a youngster, but I expect her to be the equal threat in the second half as well. So... An impressive first half performance from Dan McNamara's side, but they didn't quite get the goals to make up for it. Half time here at Castlecroft, it's Wolves nil, Nottingham Forest nil. It's nil nil at the break here at the CKW Stadium. I'm joined again at half time by Jen Anslow. Jen, what are your thoughts on that first half? Yeah, I thought it was a really steady first 20 minutes. We really settled into it. It's quite equal pressure um, and uh, possession. Um, we started to step it up though after 20 minutes, I felt like we got a grip of the game. Uh, we defended solidly and we broke really well, so yeah, it's a shame it's nil-nil still. I feel like there was a goal there somewhere before half-time. Yeah, it's been a really strong, really strong start for Wolves and of course there have been some great chances. Jade Cross, Alicia Miller looking really strong up front. Do you think it's just unlucky that we haven't had a goal or is it something missing? 
Um, it, unlucky in a sense. I mean, apart from the, the obvious there with the, with the yellow card, yes. I thought Jade would have been through on goal there had she have been able to go, go on. Um, I think we're well supported with Tammy in behind. I think it's just that last little bit of decision making with shooting. We're yeah. snapping at our shots a little bit instead of letting it play out a little bit more and, and getting a firmer shot on target, really. Is there anyone in particular that stood out for you in that first half? Um, definitely Summer Holmes in centre mid. She's come back from um, knee injuries and various other, other things and she's looking really strong. She deserves her start today. Um, she's, she's played really well covering the back three. Um, and Tammy, George, going forwards, I feel like she's ran with the ball and they've had to bring her down to stop her. So, Yeah, it's been a really strong performance so far. Um, we're actually going to throw now to a video where I got to speak to Energy Angels founder Lewis Taylor, Captain Anna Price, Anna Cody, captain of the Wolves' first team, and spoke to them about how they've had to adapt to life in COVID. We're here today for Energy Angels Captain's Chat with both our men's and women's captains, Connor Cody and Anna Price. You can see I'm also joined today by Energy Angels founder, Lewis Taylor. Energy Angels are the club's official energy partner and the main sponsor of Wolves Women. Now today, we're gonna to be speaking about how each of your roles has changed over the past year and the adaptations we've all had to make to cope with the pandemic. Now, of course, Anna and Connor, your journey started similarly last March with the football seasons being suspended until further notice. Connor, how did you cope with that sudden change to routine? Uh, do you know what? Was, as for everybody in the world, as for everyone in our country, it was really tough, really, really tough. I think football stopping completely was hard and not just mm. for footballers either, I think for supporters, for people involved with football, for, for everybody, because football's a breakaway, I think. So I think for everybody it was tough, but I think for us it was obviously an adaptation of how do we go about our daily lives now. We had to keep fit, we had to keep on going. Yeah. I, I heard quite a lot of things of people saying it was a break. It certainly wasn't a break because we were doing things every day with no real no real time scale of how, how long we had to train for and training on your own is tough. It really, really is. So it was tough to, tough to adapt, but we managed to do it and it was a long time without us, but when it came back, we were made up, yeah. And Anna, was it a similar experience for you? Of course, slightly different in the sense that at the moment you're in a similar situation again with the season being suspended over the past few months. Have you found it similar to Connor? Yeah, you know, initially, obviously the first lockdown, you know, it was a bit of a scare for everyone, wasn't it, mm. as, as a country? And you know, the first one um, was a shock, a total change of day-to-day of -day life. Um, yeah, like you say, it, for us, it's been slightly different. So, you know, the stage that we were at first time round, we were so close to obviously completing the season and, and being top at the time. Um, and then going back, starting again come, mm. come uh, September and then it happening, you know, again at the moment. And, you know, it has been tough. You know, a lot different to day-to-day -day life, isn't it? And football is yeah. a massive part of, of our lives. And, yeah, it, it has been a tough time. But, obviously, we are aware that there's a bigger picture out there and, you know, people are losing loved ones, etc. But, yeah, it's been difficult. Yeah, it's been it's been a challenging time for for everybody in all in all industries, not obviously just in sports. Lewis, how has your working routine changed over the past year? Um, I definitely get a lot more of kids jumping in on meetings like this, <laughs> <laughs> which is great, actually. I mean, yeah, the positive is that you see more of family when you're working from home. So mm -hmm. I've come to the office today. Usually, you know, I'm in my office at home and, and then the kids are running around. So, so that side of it is great. Um, I would say we were ready from an IT point of view for all of this. So all of our guys just went home and carried on, which was great. But that's great. We, we didn't really kind of envisage the loneliness that comes with it. So I, I guess, you know, trying to sort of schedule in chats with the guys regularly. We've got we've, we've actually doubled in size through the pandemic as well. Wow. So we've recruited new people who haven't got an idea about what we do or anything. And they're stuck in front of a computer at home. So that's been quite difficult to navigate, but uh, yeah, they, they, all of our team have done it as best as they possibly can. Learn loads of lessons that we do again, but hopefully mm. we'll, we'll never have to need it. Connor, of course, the Premier League season returned for you in June last year and or since. How has your role as a captain changed this season? You know, motivating the team without fans. We can certainly hear you shouting commands a lot more on the pitch than we did when you were being drowned out by crowds previously. How has that changed for you? Oh, an awful lot, an awful lot. I think first and foremost, it's been 
as I mentioned before, it's, it's a talk about how, how tough it's been because without supporters, the game totally changes. Yeah. I think football totally changes without supporters. Supporters are everything. And I think what the supporters does for us as a team is massive. And I've seen a few people say about clubs missing fans and other things. We're certainly a club who's done that. We've missed our supporters like crazy. So that's yeah. been a part of it. I think in terms of my role as a captain, it's always something where we always like to do things as a team as maybe that's going out, going out for food, doing things, go-karting, all these different bits and bobs. We've, we've always been a team who's done that and we've always quite enjoyed it. So we've not been able to do things like that. So we've been trying to do a few things within the dressing room. We we brought, we do like a lot of fines within the dressing room and we brought a wheel in like a, like a wheel, like you've got to do. So if you get a fine, you spin the wheel and you get obviously a category and you've got to do that fancy dress and all this sort of thing. So it was about trying to just obviously bring people, our dressing room is fantastic anyway, but bring bring the lads a little bit close together without doing them mm. things that we do outside of football. And it was a few little things within the changing room that we could do. It's been great. It's been great, but it's been a tough time, but it's it, 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 it's easy for me to say, but we've been lucky enough that we can carry on playing football. We're not like Anna and the women's team who find it so tough not playing football. I can't imagine what it, what, what, what she feels like and what the women, what, what the ladies feel like. So I think it's something for us. We're lucky, but obviously we're trying to, trying to get better and trying to bring these things together as well, what we do in the changing room. Do you think football is going to change once fans are allowed back in the stadiums? Is it going to really boost everyone's performances across the Premier League? I hope so. I think it'll certainly boost ours because, I, I, as I mentioned before, we're, we're a team, we're a club, we miss our supporters like man. I think the boost that they give us every every week going out and playing, and we, we've seen it with the with, with the years the manager's been here. They've been absolutely incredible. In my time here, the club have been here for six years now. They've been absolutely incredible with me. So we're a club, we massively miss them. And I think when it first opens back up, whether that's the 21st, whether that's the 21st of June, whether that's next year, whenever that may be, and we can get mm-hmm. a full Molyneux again, I can't imagine what the feeling's going to be like and how it's going to be that day. But I think that's what we're all wishing for to come sooner rather than later, to be honest with you. That'll be absolutely magical moment. Magical moment. Now, Anna, it's been announced, of course, that the Women's FA Cup will be returning soon, which is absolutely incredible news. It sounds like a bit of a silly question, but are you excited to get back on the pitch? <laughs> oh, I can't wait. We've got, the, uh, got a message on the WhatsApp from our manager today, just saying, you know, confirming the date, confirm the fixture, because, you know, we have really been left, you know, uh, we, we don't know yeah. what's going on. It's... Um, it's been really difficult, to be honest, this lockdown in particular, in, in regards to that, to get that news today, you know, straight away, you know, the manager's sorting out one-to-ones, um, you know, we have our fitness Zooms anyway, Tuesday, Thursday, so, you know, everyone will be itching to log on tonight, you know, just just having that carrot dangling, you know, knowing that actually I'm not jumping around a screen on Zoom every Tuesday, Thursday night for no reason. Uh, do you know what I mean like <laughs> yeah you're um, working towards something now yeah exactly it's an FA Cup game we can't wait for it Nottingham Forest at home um you know and if we get through we've heard potentially Watford next round so what a, oh, that'd be amazing. You know, <laughs> what an incentive so yeah can't wait really pleased thank you all for sharing your experiences from the past year it's been really interesting to hear how you've all coped in such unprecedented circumstances we keep hearing that word unprecedented don't we over the past year but it's been really really interesting and, and thank you to Lewis and the team at Energy Angels for their support this season for more information head to energyangels.co.uk to find out more about what they're doing and good luck for the rest of the season and we will see you again soon hopefully It was really great to speak to all three of them after what has been a really difficult year. Now, Jen, looking ahead to the second half, what do you hope to see from Wolves women? Um, I hope they start off how they finished, um, with slightly higher possession, confidence on the ball, um, just maybe with um, a bit more patience in front of goal, looking for that last ball before having a snapshot. And of course, let's not forget, Nottingham Forest are, of course, the tier above Wolves women. But I think it's been a relatively even meeting here today. Do you think they've done particularly well against the side as strong as Nottingham Forest? Yeah, I mean, Nottingham Forest are middle of the league above. Um, and as we've finished twice at the top of our league, you thought you might see a difference, but there really isn't. You could, if you were watching a, a neutral or watching for the first time, you wouldn't notice that they were in different leagues. I think we've really held our own, if not had the better half of, half of that first half. Definitely. And you know probably better than most what Dan might be saying in that dressing room at the moment. What do you think he's saying to the girls ahead of the second half? <laughs> a lot of no letting up, um, a lot of keeping it the same. I'm sure he'll pick fault in a few, a few things. Um, he'll be really confident, he'll be really happy with that first half. Um, we really set our stall out and some. Um, he'll look to keep it the same. I can't imagine him changing the team much before 70 minutes. 
Looking ahead to when he does want to make some changes, who do you think that we have on the bench today that could make an impact in the second half? Um, we've got Orla on the wing. I think that would change it up and give us a bit more balance and width if he's looking to attack down the wing more. Um, we've got two midfielders on the wing where they naturally want to either cut inside or drift inside because they're more of a central midfielder. Yeah. Um, so if he wants to exploit down the wings, I think he'll, he'll look to bring Orla on. And of course, we've got two players in today's team who actually are playing against their former side. They used to play for Nottingham Forest and now with us, we've got Beck Thomas in goal and of course, Deli, Debbie, Kelly Darby as well. You've played against both of them and alongside them. How much yeah. of a threat are they as well? They're fantastic players. They're um, definitely um, the sort of quality you see in the league above. Um, solid defender and goalkeeper, really professional and confident players. Um, yeah, really great to play with them. Glad they're on our side, if I'm honest. <laughs> yes, definitely. And of course, we've got thousands of people watching now on Wolves TV. And we're live on Wolves TV, YouTube and the Wolves app for the very first time. How good is it to see the women's game getting more exposure? It's incredible. I mean, there's nothing better is there than to be able to see women's football on TV <laughs> now, personally. Um, I just hope it's something that becomes embedded and uh, we see it go on in the future and that we get to, to have Wolves women on the TV more often. Well, thank you so much, Jen, for joining us today. It's been a pleasure to have you here. I'm going to hand you back now to your commentary team, Mikey Burrows and Claire Hakeman. Well, both sets of substitutes have been out warming up on the field here at the CKW Stadium at half-time. Doesn't look like either side will be making any changes, though Claire Hakeman, we imagine Nottingham Forest won't leave it too long because it feels like they've got an awful lot to do to try and damage what Wolves have been doing so far. Yeah, I imagine what they'll probably do is leave it for the first 10-15. Let's see if they can get themselves back into the game and then uh, maybe make changes from there. But, I mean, for Wolves, I'm, I think they'll probably stick with what they've got for now because uh, first half, I thought they dominated. They looked strong in possession. Uh, they were winning the ball back uh, from Forest, Forest on repeat. So I think they'll leave it a little bit longer if the game keeps going as it is uh, to make any changes. We talked a little bit beforehand about the extended break that both sides have been under really but you consider it's been such a long time since they've had a competitive game I know you were chatting with Jen Anslow beforehand about just a difference in match fitness as composed to just keeping yourself fit and ticking over yeah definitely there's no replacement for match fitness as many zoom calls and fitness sessions as you can do there's nothing like that moment in a game where you really just have to get get the minutes into you into your body so um i mean i think to be honest i think they've done superbly both teams really in terms of the fact that they don't look too rusty um i've been quite impressed by uh, particularly obviously wolves display the first half um and the way that they've been comfortable in possession and, and they've played like they've never been away, really. You just saw at the bottom of the pitch here, Jamila Palmer, the reigning player of the season, been warming up at half-time. I wonder how long it will be before Dan McNamara feels that her introduction may just add something a little bit different in those forward areas. Yeah, I think she'll be uh, somebody that Dan will be thinking about definitely as the game goes onwards. And uh, she's a massive, massive threat and a real quality player. Strikes from distance. Uh, I've seen, seen her score some great goals over the years. So I think she'll definitely be one that he's looking into. Um, you've got Shani Jennings in there as well, cent uh, centre midfielder, who uh, would, would add a little bit of value in the centre midfield as well. But I think Wolves have been doing great so far and hopefully they go into the second half the same way as they finished the first. Could be a big 45 minutes ahead. Don't go anywhere. Thank you for joining us here on Wolves TV on this historic occasion. Watching Wolves were in for the first, first time and what an impressive performance it's been so far. Edwards, got a bad delivery in. Miller was trying to get control of it. It's a decent ball from Naya, that on a, on a bobble. As you can see, the ball was bobbling as she put the ball in, but uh, Ali Miller just couldn't get on the end of it. So Wolves with Beck Thomas in goal, back three of Kelly Darby, Emma Cross and Anna Morfitt, Nia Edwards and Harry Walker, the wing backs, Anna Price and Summer Holmes holding in midfield, allowing Tammy George to join the front two of Ali Miller and Jade Cross up top. Forrest a little bit more fluid, Angie Aguirre is their goalkeeper, Georgia Hewitt, Lindsay Harkin, Olivia Cook on a yellow card and Laura Jane O'Neill, the back four. Sydney Naylor, Charlotte Steggles holding in midfield, Charlotte Greengrass providing a bit more support, Hayley James, Sophia Bonza and Rosie Axton. 
Thomas's pass intercepted by James. Forest maybe trying to start the second half a lot stronger than they played the majority of the first 45. I imagine their managers had a bit to say at half time to be honest because they've just really uh, haven't really competed in the first half and like we said on the stats at half time uh, very few shots on uh, on goal at all so I'm sure he'll be very disappointed Andy Cook so I imagine the girls will be wanting to make up for that now Opportunity though for Forrest who definitely got the bit between their teeth a little bit more off its clearance Walker was trying to find Cross. It was read by Cook. More urgency and energy about Forrest's play, but again, it was Tammy George tracking back. Might drop for an effort from distance by Sydney Naylor. Well wide in the end of Beck Thomas's goal. I think Wolves need to just make sure that they settle first 10 minutes especially. They should know that Forrest are going to come at them because they probably will be a bit disappointed with their first half display. So I think um, Dan will have probably told the, the girls to just make sure they keep it tight for the first 10 minutes and then and then maybe get back into the game and, and, and take their game back to Forrest. Yeah, you've got to pace yourself, haven't you, on this kind of occasion. It is warm down at pitch side as well. It's due to get a lot colder. And the men are back in action tomorrow. Flag has gone up really late against James. Still Beck a great Thomas save. Equal yeah. To it, yeah. I was just going to say that's still a great save from Beck Thomas there. Fair play to her. And I think that's a bit of a psychological one, isn't it? Even if she, she still didn't manage to put the ball in the back of the net. So I think Beck Thomas will take a bit of uh, confidence from that as well. Uh, it was a late flag, wasn't it? Um, I'm pretty pleased to see that go up on the far side. Again, just a, a little warning sign that Forrester are going to be a bit keener to put some pressure on Wolves in the second period. Well, I think already in this, this first five minutes, they've, they've probably done, done more and a little, been a, a little bit more about them in terms of their physicality and, and putting Wolves under pressure a little bit. So uh, I imagine it's going to be a tough 10 minutes or so for Wolves until it settles. Price for Derby. Emma Cross. Flying into it to try and keep it alive. Axton trying to find a way through the middle. Danger moment here, Axton, and manages to find a way through. And having been so dominant in that first period, Wolves, they find themselves behind early in the second. Rosie Axton clean through on Beck Thomas, and she couldn't keep them out this time. Forrest get themselves the advantage. Yeah, and that's pretty much their first chance of the game, isn't it, really? Like, clear-cut chance. Uh, she's through on goal. I mean, she's their top goal scorer, I believe. So um, it's, it's a decent finish from her. But Wolves will be disappointed. Then They need to relax a little bit. Uh, you could see already in that first five minutes with Forrest putting a little bit more pressure on top of them, Wolves looked a little bit panicky. But hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll settle, they'll relax, um, uh, and hopefully they'll get back into it. Big frustration will be that they... Had the possession, didn't they, on the halfway line as well and just got caught a little bit, perhaps in a way that they didn't really do so in the first period. Yeah, I think they were just caught slightly out of oh, shape Ali there. Miller, what a challenge to win possession back. And I think that's going to be a free kick rather than a corner. I think that was deserved. I mean, really brave from Ali Miller, wasn't it, there to, to get, get possession back for a team. A few complaints coming there from Sophia Bonza and... Laura Jane O'Neill, it was O'Neill who absolutely sent flying by the challenge of Ali Miller. I think Wolves just need to relax and, and, and make the most of these opportunities that are going to come at them now. And um, Obviously they'll be di disappointed to concede, but you know it's only one goal and I think Wolves have to try and get back to thinking how, they did, uh, how well they did first half. Morfitt preparing for the delivery again. All the options are a long way beyond the far post. Big gap to try and swing this one into. And it's a high hanging delivery and it was George who was arriving. Couldn't quite get a direction on it. Yeah, I think that ball was flying, to be honest, if she'd have, she'd have done well to get that back across the box. But uh, it's a shame. Um, I think they just need to settle, maybe relax, get back to pressing them, put them under a little bit of pressure. Um, but obviously Forrest will be really pleased with the start that they've made. Long way to go though, isn't there? That'll be a key message, I imagine. 
Yeah, I think, you know, it's always difficult when you can see the goal as well at the start of the second half. It knocks the stuffing out of you. You've just had your team taught. You're all ready to go. You want to keep it tight. And then, obviously, the goal, goal can really affect players' confidence. And um, they just need to settle, relax. Derby forwards. Well, thankfully, there have been plenty of goals scored by Wolves women this season. They scored 43 in the nine matches that they had played before today. Which is quite phenomenal when you think about it. They'd only conceded three before this game. Yeah, they've definitely got goals in them, and they've got go goals all over the pitch from from lots of different areas, not just from your strikers. So um, Wolves need to take confidence from that, and and hopefully the chances will come. A bit more defending to do at the moment, though. Early in the second half, important that they don't go two down as Harkin launches forwards. Harby's header clear. George trying to find Emma, trying to find Jade Cross. He's got Edwards racing up on the outside. Jade Cross continuing to carry on. It's not a bad delivery in, and it forced the header behind by Cook. Yeah, well played, Jade Cross there. I thought she did brilliantly. I mean, it tells you a little bit about her pace, because I think Edwards was going to overlap her and then realised she probably wasn't going to catch her, so she uh, obviously moved inside the pitch. But it's a great ball from uh, Jade and another set piece coming from Anamorphic. And again, those players will set up such a long way beyond that far post. Clearly something that they've worked on. And it is just an element that they know that anamorphic can reach them. But look at the space inside that penalty area. Absolutely huge. As this ball gets delivered in, you'll see it go flying through. I mean, it's a shame there. It's missing um, Anna Price. And obviously, she's a big threat in terms of uh, set-piece deliveries. She's a great threat in the air. Just saw Anna Price having a word with Anna Morfitt as she was making her way back from taking that corner. Perhaps making the point you just made, Claire, of giving me something a little bit more to aim for. Yeah, I think it's possibly, even, a t uh, even if that is the uh, tactic, it just looks a little bit possibly too deep. And maybe they need to mix it up a little bit. I'm sure they've got a little bit more in their locker in terms of set pieces. So hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll be saving them for later in the game. So, Wolves nil, Nottingham Forest one on Wolves TV, powered by Energy Angels. First time we've been able to show you Wolves women. And despite the scoreline, it's been an impressive performance, but they will be hoping to find a way back into this. A little bit more defending to do in the meantime. Derby in with a strong challenge, too strong for Chloe Matthews, the referee's liking. Yeah, I think Wolves need to just get back into the game and, and relax and get the confidence back up and um, hopefully the chances will come. I mean, the girls won't give up on it, I'm sure. Um, and obviously there is players to come on the bench and, and, and I'm sure they'll be getting ready. I can see players warming up already. Down the line from O'Neill. Bonser. It's an inviting delivery and it's bouncing away and it needed Larry Walker just to tidy things up. Real composure from Walker. Former Wales Youth International. It would have been easy just to have a swing at that and a wild swing and it could have gone anywhere. Yeah, she did She did really well. She was under massive pressure on the far post there and uh, managed to get the ball away just in time. Involved in an attacking sense here with a very good ball for Cross. His route to try and switch the play was blocked off in the end by O'Neill. Tammy George in with the challenge. It was unfortunate there, wasn't it? I think she was desperately trying to get the play switched out to Nia Edwards, but uh, that's where the play was developing, but she just couldn't get control of the ball, unfortunately. Yeah, just difficult bounce, wasn't it? And I guess good defending by O'Neill. He probably knew the overlap was coming. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, you can tell that Forrest are, are, are buzzing after the goal that they've scored, and, and they look they look like they're now that they're the team with a little bit more confidence. But I'm sure Dan will be, and Perks will be talking to the girls and trying to get them get them going again. Yeah, Forrest may be trying to use their extra level, playing in the division above Wolves this season. It wasn't a great campaign for them when the season was ended. And they're threatening again, looking for a second, a powerful driving run, but that Thomas down to it lower the near post. Powerful header 
by Steggles this time. Yeah, well, I mean, Forest look like a different team, don't they? They're coming out. They look like they look like possibly they are the, the division above at the moment. But uh, I'm sure Wolves can settle, get back into the game, and um, hopefully they'll come back at it um, as the game continues. One of the potentially awkward bits for Dan McNamara is that coaching staff are on the far side of the field and the subs for both teams are in the stand with us. Such as social, social distancing. And it's Bonser. Blocked off by Cross. And Forrest settling for the throw. If he does want to make a change, the message will have to be run around the field. Yeah, I think they've got a couple of staff in the stands here that are maybe they're mic'd up and they'll, they'll get the message through when he wants somebody sent round. But yeah, logistics is definitely uh, is definitely something we've not had to think about before. There's Cross. Chance to try and run the ball. Not for the first time in this half. Carrying it an awful long way and continuing to go on. And Steggles is the initial player just to get back across in front. I think the defender did really well, didn't she there? She knew that Joe was going to take her on and kind of managed to block her off. Um, fortunately for Wolves, the other defender didn't didn't let it run out of play for a goal kick and, and gave Wolves a throw. Derby story for George. Thing again on this right-hand side. Strong challenge coming in for Maxton. He's managed to steal it away and get away from Holmes as well. Miller putting the pressure on, punching challenge in for Nia Edwards and Emma Cross trying to switch the play. Oh, that's a great footing by Nia Edwards there, uh, retrieved possession back, it could have been quite a threat for Forrest there. Wolves trying to find a route back into this. Lindsay Axton's goal early in the second half, the difference. And if it stays like this, there'll be even more sense of injustice of the potential red card in the first half that never happened. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's moments like that. And it can knock the stuffing out of you as well, because I think Wolves will be a bit frustrated that they didn't get the decision. And that would have totally changed the complexion of the game for them. Nice touch from Walker to find Cross here. Support from Edwards. It's a little bit short. Holmes first to it. Nia Edwards to try and drive on and touch by O'Neill. Might be able to spot down in that bottom corner. The figure of Jamila Palmer warming up a little bit more intensely. Walker trying to find space for the cross and will settle for the corner. I mean, Jamila's a handful, so I think uh, their defender's looking over and she's got a lot of experience actually in the league that Forrest's playing, so. Um, I think they'll be looking over and, and, and be a bit worried about that one and they'll be juggling the pace of either Cross or Miller with, with Jim Miller as well. So uh, defensively, you'd definitely be uh, a little bit worried about her coming on. In the meantime, Wolves with another set-piece opportunity. The Morfitt hangs a little bit more invitingly for Price. He's still trying to keep it alive. Miller's going to go flying in. Bravely went in there as well. And in the end, Forrest just had the numbers back to deal with it. There was oh. definitely more of a threat to that delivery, wasn't there? I think it was a lot closer for Perksy to get on the end of, so she was unlucky there, really. Again, Ali Miller just throwing herself at that loose ball. Very, very on display. Yeah, she, she certainly has no fear either. I mean, this is... There's a lot of the players here that are just playing all out. I mean, imagine you haven't played for four months and this could be your last game of the season. I mean, it's a hell of a position to be in, isn't it? Yeah, leave nothing on the field. Totally that. There's Bonser for Forrest. Support for Maxton. Holmes going in. Didn't quite keep the ball from going over that line. Again, it's where Wolves don't want to be at the moment. Good interception by Holmes. Turning and clearing. Miller trying to make the most of it. George will challenge in midfield. Oh, Walker. Look at the desire. And carrying on here, Larry Walker. And she's got two to her right-hand side. But she might not need them. Did everything right until the finish. 
That's such a fantastic run by Larry Walker and uh, it just tells you the player that she is. We haven't managed to get her into many of those positions, but she was flying there. It's a shame she couldn't have uh, finished the job off. And support as well, didn't she? Can't blame her for going for goal. No, it was, a, it was a great run, great run from her there and she opted to obviously shoot herself, which I yeah, totally don't blame her, she was in a great position. Edwards has support here from Tammy George. Forrest again just closing in. Summer Holmes had a real whack at that. Edwards trying to keep it alive. Forrest have worked it clear as far as Axton. I think Wolves have just got to be careful as well not to throw too much forward. I mean, they're only 1-0 down, so they're still very much in this game, but they don't want to um, throw too much too soon and then and then be short at the back. Jade Cross got it from Larry Walker. And turns the favour. It's not a bad effort from distance. She's growing in influence at the moment, Larry Walker, on that left-hand side. Yeah, it's a decent connection, isn't it, that? He's got nine goals in nine appearances this season. 31 and 49. This is the 50th appearance of a Wolves career. She's a great, she's a great player. She had a spell at Villa and um, playing uh, uh, WSL. So she's a, she's a really strong player. Um, so hopefully she can get on the ball a little bit more, which she's done in literally the last few minutes. I think Jamila Palmer getting close to coming on is Tammy George now Summer Holmes mm -hmm. Edwards had a dig and again Forrest have done well so far in this game actually just to get bodies in the way I think Wolves have come back into it haven't in the last five minutes so um, lots of positives to take from this we're getting on the ball a little bit more in the final third now Edwards in field Summer Holmes looking for Anna Price Support for Morfitt to her left. Walker has pulled out to the touchline. Miller was showing short. He's in the direction of Jay Cross. They might still find her. Oh, and it was an excellent stop from Asia Aguirre in the Forest goal. Just had to stretch maybe more than she wanted to, Jay Cross there. Oh, it was a great gamble from Jay, wasn't it? She gambled on the fact that the defender would miss the ball, and she did. And she just probably it was just slightly ahead of her, really. Keeper did really well again, though, to be fair. She's had a great game so far. Excellent work by Ali Miller. Really unfortunate that that line just crept up on it. Just a hobbling a little bit, Jade Cross, at the moment. That'll be one to keep an eye on. You can see why she scores so many goals, though. It's that desire to get in there, Claire. Yeah, I mean, she's just got that extra little bit of pace as well to, to kind of get into the positions that other people can't. Um, manages to nick the balls away. Um, I mean, it looks like we have got a sub in coming now with Jamila making her way around to the far side. Interesting to see who Jamila comes on for as well. I'd say both Jay Cross and Ali Miller have had good games so far. It's Forrest who have the advantage really their only effort on goal in the game well looking at the, looking at the subs board that I can kind of glance there through the glass it could be um Naya Edwards that looks like she might be making way and she's had quite an impact in the last few minutes but that's keeping three pretty much very attacking players on the pitch cross finding Edwards and it might open out here Edwards having a go for goal sensational yeah. absolutely sensational from Naya Edwards Oh, that's a great finish. I'm so chuffed for her. Stepped in field, opened out, saw the route to the top corner and absolutely snatched it. And has snatched a route back into this cup tie. Wolves won, Forest won, and what a beautiful goal. Oh, it was a fantastic finish. I mean, she's a great youngster. She's come through the system through the RTC. Um, she's a local girl from Bridge North. I, I know her family really well. I'm, I'm so chuffed for her. Perfect view from where we were as well, Claire, that you could just see the invite, the invitation to go for goal in that top corner. And she could have had an effort a um, split second before it, but showed the composure just to get it under control. Yeah, she had a chance in just a very similar position there, but she was so composed on that one. She took a touch, she took it in slide, slightly, it opened up and she, she went for it. It was a great finish there. I mean, quite interesting that she's down there because I, th I think she's the person that's meant to, uh, that's due to make way for Jamila Palmer, but 
Uh, maybe the time is right. What a great way to exit the game, if, if that's her. Well, what an impact. What an impact she's had. And maybe a moment here as well. Just a bit of... We've got summer, play. Yeah, summer homes down as well at the moment. I wonder, Claire, just a little moment as well. Just having got that goal, Dan McNamara saying, right, let's just calm everyone down again. Take a moment, get a drink, regroup a touch, and get ourselves going. Yeah, totally. I mean, Perks will be getting the girls round. I can see them now gathering, trying to get back, get their composure back. Um, really go again. They've got, they've took this game back to Forest for the last five to ten minutes, and that's a that's a hell of a job when you've conceded a goal just after half time to come back at it. So I'm really proud of the girls. Well, <laughs> Naya Edwards scores and then goes off, and Jamila Palmer. And player of the season last year is on. The Wolves have gone even more attacking. And she will hit down the tunnel as well. I think she's got a smack in the face. She's got a big smile on her face though as well. <laughs> <laughs> so she should. Absolutely deserved from the 19-year-old. First goal of the season as well, by the way. Brilliant. Only yes. the second of a Wolves career. Yeah, so fantastic to see her on the score sheet. I mean, it's, it's a great story when somebody's come through the system to see her making it for the first team and then and then scoring a game in a huge game like this is. And you know the question will be, if she can hit them like that, why hasn't she scored more? Plenty of time in her Wolves career. I think she's played quite centrally, um, Nia Edwards previously. I think she's probably been hold a bit more of a holding role in the centre of midfield, but she's she's done a great job on that on that right wing back position and getting forward and back and just be, just minutes before we saw her make great make a great tackle to win possession back for the girls. So she's she's definitely offered on, on both levels of attacking and defending. Looks like Ali Miller will maybe go and play a little bit to the right hand side. We'll see when Wolves regroup after this set piece. Forrest will be looking to strike back quickly. Steggles and Harkin over the ball. I know Steggles scored a couple of goals from distance in pre-season for Forrest against Wolves. So She had a go there, didn't she? Didn't quite get enough behind it. Luckily, that one was wide. It was an awful long way out. It would have taken something special to beat Beck Thomas from there. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how um, we have Miller, Jay Cross and Jimmy setting up here because um, for Forrest, I mean, I think at, at times they've they've looked like they've been struggling with Miller and Cross, so you've added a third one to the mix now, so it'd be interesting to see how, how they deal with that. Yeah, a real fascinating period now. As we've spoken about how much the fitness plays a part. Here's Palmer. Couldn't quite find Miller. Played by O'Neill. Bonza couldn't find a way. That's Kelly Darby. So Jamila's getting straight involved in the game. It's a shame she couldn't get a little bit more on that pass to get uh, Miller away, but um, she'll be integral now. She's so strong, strong in possession of the ball and, and, and control and um, a massive threat, threat as well when she's driving with the ball. She has immense power um, on some of her strikes. I've seen quite a few then when we've put montages together with goals of the month. Maya Edwards has shown the way in terms of striking so far this afternoon. The Wolves are very much in this. Yeah, definitely. I hope they keep taking it to Forest now. This is a, like they, they need to keep, keep the momentum and, and keep going at Forest and get that press back on to try and really drive them back. Pressure being put on by Jade Cross. Just felt like momentum was with Wolves, didn't it? In the build-up to that goal, it had the Walkers brilliant run through the middle. Jade Cross nearly snatched in behind as well. It's Forrester preparing a change. Sophia Bonza going off. We have to see just yet who it is that's coming on. Forrest needing to make something different happen. The Wolves have been in the ascendancy for the last couple of minutes. Yeah, I think so. I think Wolves will be really pleased and, and Dan will be really happy that 
they've managed to put a load of pressure on after they've conceded that goal because it is disappointing when you concede so early after after half time and 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 it can go one or two ways but w Wolves have come back into the game and and I'd say they're now looking a stronger team again. Poppy Schofield, yes. Come on. It's Forrest try and wrestle control. But here comes Tammy George driving forwards once more. Miller's in space on this right hand side. There are options in the penalty area. Support here from Holmes. Needed a shout. Miller, look at the tenacity again. And unfortunate the free kick given against her, but the effort and work rate that she's put in today. It's been really impressive. Yeah, she's been unbelievable. I mean, she's 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 extremely brave. And now, I mean, she's going into a tricky position now because she's going to have to offer a lot more on the defensive side of the game. And she's put a lot of energy into the game so far. So um, she's had a decent workout today. Ball just went over the top of her there. Schofield couldn't collect. Crosses ball forwards. It's going to find its way to Jade Cross, who had the time to turn. And she fancied having a dig from distance. Awkward bounce in front of the goalkeeper. Yeah, it's a lovely turn there from Jade. Um, I think she'll probably be disappointed she didn't quite connect with the shot, but uh, still in some great positions and, and still a massive threat. Axton getting the free kick from Price's challenge. It's going to be a fascinating late period here. So you also conceded quite a few free kicks so far. Numbers grown a little bit more in the second half. Yeah, I think Forest have definitely turned up, haven't they? Second half, um, I think they've they've offered a bit more of a threat, and the, and Wolves really do need to be organised and stay out, stay organised to keep them out. And applause for Naya Edwards rejoining the subs in the stand near us. As Derby and Price combine, and George will be able to carry it forwards. Wolves against Nottingham Forest here on Wolves TV, powered by Energy Angels. Sensing, perhaps, that something special can happen in this final period. There will be extra time and the potential of penalties, should it be needed. I fancy that after four months out from playing. I think the last thing you want after a, a massive gap in play and your fitness levels are, are struggling for match fitness is uh, extra time and penalties. Price with the header. Miller first to it. Here's Cross again on the turn and Palmer racing to get into that penalty area. Still Jade Cross trying to pick out Palmer. It comes through to Walker. Sat up invitingly and she knew it. Oh, I bet she's disappointed she didn't take a touch. I mean, it's easy for us to say from up here, but she looked like she had a little bit of time there, so she could have maybe took a touch, settled herself, and then got her shot away. Had a long time, didn't she, to watch that ball come towards her. It was too tempting to not hit, was there, wasn't <laughs> yeah. it? You could just see her eyes light up. Had a very impressive game so far, as many of them have out there. Yeah, I think everybody's contributed, haven't they? I uh, uh, literally can't pick a player out on the pitch. I mean, I can see already Lowry Walker starting to stretch her calves off on the far side. I wonder if she's struggling a little bit with cramp. But I think if you get into this point in the game after four months off, I think it's kind of inevitable. George challenging. It was a strong challenge that went in on Steggles. Greengrass was holding it up. That's hit Chloe Matthews. We'll have a pause. I think that's more of a, a cramp issue for Steggles than anything else well, in the looks of things. Yeah, and you, Tammy George just behind having a stretch as well. I think we just get into that point in the game where, where fit, fitness levels are going to tell and it's going to be a tough one. And I mean, if you're on that pitch, the last thing you really want is extra time. You don't want it to go on any longer, really. Yeah, got through probably an awful lot of the game, especially at the start on adrenaline. And it might explain just how dominant Wolves were in that first period where Forrest were maybe trying to hold a little bit back. Who knows? Yeah, definitely. I think um, I think both teams that both teams that want this done in 90 minutes and uh, obviously for us, we hope that Wolves, Wolves finish this job off. I think they've done fantastically so far and it's been a great advert for Wolves women uh, and women's football in general. Yeah, it's been thoroughly entertaining, hasn't it? Some really good efforts on goals, some really impressive play. 
think like the quality as well. Um, I expected maybe them to be a little bit more rusty after such a long period of time and only just a few days actually training together. So, and obviously not forgetting these girls are not training in the daytime, they're training it on, on an evening when they finish work. So it's it's all the combinations of, of getting back to, to, to the normal world, I suppose. I spoke to Dan Mantuar in the week. He was talking about just how receptive the players are, how much they want to learn that they're such a respectful group and as long as there's a how behind the what that they will dig in and put the effort in. He was talking, Claire, about having characters but recruiting the right mentality as well. Yeah, 100%. And I think, to be fair, like even like a few years ago when I used to play, we used to have such a strong squad in terms of mentality and... And, and characters but with a bit of experience in there as well and getting the right players that are going to work well together um, and they've got a fantastic squad and I think like the, the amount of support Wolves have given them I think they're just proud to represent the club as well Yeah and where this football club is going too because there have been times in the past where players like yourself and Rachel Unit and others have had to move on to get to the higher levels maybe players like Jay Cross here can take Wolves there themselves She's taken the ball an awful long way, and it's Palmer to try and get the strike. Maybe not the power she wanted. Oh, it's not like Jamila that, so I think she was in a great position, and I, I thought she'd get the Jamila rocket out, but um, no. I thought it was a great bit of play, though, and I think it's just a sign of what, what could still come. Uh, hopefully she'll get another chance in the next few minutes. George again, full of running, clever dribble. Couldn't quite find cross. Maybe have it after those couple of injury stoppages. Trying to get the tempo built again, though. Forrest are going to make another change. And I think it is Steggles that's going off. She looks like she's struggling after that little knock, doesn't she? Yeah, I say Cramp may be playing an issue as well. Sophie Tudor is the one who's come on. Sophie Tudor replacing Charlotte Steggles. So Forrest with two changes so far. Walls having only made the one, and it was an attacking one, and it was to bring on Jamila Palmer here. She was fancying it, wasn't she? Waiting for the space to line it up, and that's a very clever ball by Summer Holmes. Just maybe a little bit too much on it oh, for unlucky. Lowry Walker. Unlucky from Summer. I think it was a it was the right idea, wasn't it, to to play back out to the left uh, to work it out to get it back into the centre. Uh, Jamila was unlucky, really. She was trying to just get that little bit of space just to get her shot away, but uh, it was well defended in the end. Always got to hope that momentum is building again as we creep down towards the final 10 minutes. This is where all that work over the last couple of months, running on their own, working out on their own, difficult cold weather, those wintry nights, waiting for an opportunity to get back out there. And it's all come down to one game. Clever throw. Here's George trying to make a nuisance of herself inside that forest penalty area. Just wouldn't quite sit for it. I think she's done a hell of a lot of running, hasn't she, Tammy George? I think she's starting to get a little tired now. Well, when again by Holmes, though. Across his clearance. Wolves want the throw, and they'll get it. And again, maybe trying to catch Forrest napping a little bit. Another throw, another opportunity to push on. Morfitt looking for Walker. Clever one in field to Palmer. Palmer trying to switch the play towards Miller. Cleared by O'Neill. Darby with time to collect. Looking for Ali Miller. All set for Summer Holmes, who took that nicely. Find support from Price. Good football this from Wolves. Cross. To cross. <laughs> Holmes for Palmer. Oh, didn't quite sit for it initially. Could see what she was trying to do. She was unlucky there, wasn't she? I think um, it was a great bit of play from Wolves. Um, nice way of retaining possession. 
Uh, Jim Miller's just looking for that opportunity. Holmes. Now for Palmer again. It's all that you can sense it in the air, can't you? Whenever she gets on the ball, that everyone knows she's got that strike in the locker. Walker with a driving run. That's going to be a goal kick, though. Yeah, I think she was unlucky there, Larry Walker. I think um, defender did well, though, didn't she, to, s to stop that? But, yeah, you can feel, like Jamila Palmer, the excitement that you can hear the girls, the subs to our right, are keen for her to, to get into a position to shoot because they know what a strike she has on her. And we're getting towards that period of the game where and she can get behind one and find the top corner, just as Naya Edwards did. And it could well send Wolves through to the third round not been there since 2015 being 2-0 by Charlton on that occasion beat Newcastle in this round round two Miller down the line looking for Jade Cross again good strength by Jade Cross actually deceptively strong isn't she up top Oh, she's massively tenacious and pacey, and she's got a bit of strength, she uses her body really well. Um, she's definitely caused havoc all day today for uh, Cook, hasn't she? So, um, just just hoping that she gets one more chance, really. Darby with a throw. Looking forward, Jay Cross again. Cook at her back. And will settle for the corner. We've talked an awful lot about this set-piece routine. Wouldn't it be perfect timing for it to pay off now? Oh, I think it'd be great. I think it's been a, a while since we've had a corner, and um, I think Anna Morphy, she's, <laughs> she's had lots of practice today. I think the stats on the corners are pretty high today for Wolves in terms of um, uh, how many they've had today, but um, Anna will be hoping to try and connect with somebody and get on the end of this. So Anna Morphy to deliver. Can someone get on the end of it? It's inviting. It was George who did arrive. And unfortunately, couldn't quite get the power on it. It's a real inviting delivery, though. It just said, somebody come and attack me. Cross, and a little bit of pressure. Thomas's clearance will be taken on by James. Thankfully, running it out of play. I think Wolves have just got to be careful now, haven't they? Because when you get to this point in a game that you know could go to extra time, as much as you want the job done in 90 minutes, you don't want to concede a late goal either. Um, obviously, they've got to keep it tight at the back, stay well organised. Um, Forest haven't had many opportunities in the, the game, but they've, they've shown that they only need one chance to score and um, they know that they've got the quality in terms of finishing. Looks like Charlotte Greengrass has gone off. For Forrest and May Moncaster is going to come on and join the action. So May Moncaster on for Charlotte Greengrass. So launched forwards by Harkin. Big opportunity here. Forrest getting the numbers forwards. Well blocked, though. It was great awareness, wasn't it, from the Forrest forward there, just to spin it inside uh, when she knew like the attacking partner was coming. Um, really impressive, that, but a fantastic block from Summer Holmes. Digging deep late in the game. Forrest trying to capitalise on a little bit of tiredness. I say they've made more changes than Wolves have. Yeah, I think it tells you a little bit about Wolves' display, doesn't it, as well? Because Wolves have been pr fairly happy with the way that they have played and haven't felt the need to probably change as, as much, whereas Forrest haven't been massively involved in the game. Schofield on for Naylor. Across came Emma Cross. I think there's just that threat, isn't there? When, it, when it's 1-1, it's getting late in the game, people are getting tired. Um, there's always that risk that, that one mistake could, could let them in. Axton. I was trying to work it out from a confined area. Axton, a little def deflection on the pass. It'll come to Moncaster. 
Trying to work it for James, but again, strong defending. And Walker can carry it on. Forwards towards Cross. And just for a moment, it looked like Jay Cross was going to just nip in behind Lindsay Harkin there. Miss Holmes. Options either side. Finds George. And George will draw the free kick. I mentioned it earlier, Claire. Just Tammy George's desire. Every time she gets the ball at feet, it's just straight towards goal. Let's move it forwards. Yeah, she's won a hell of a lot of free kicks in that area as well, hasn't she, throughout the game? So, but she's a great threat and, and fair play to her because she, she's continued. I mean, we're getting right towards the end of the game and she's, she's still, still causing the opposition problems. Wolves women live on Wolves TV with Energy Angels into the final few minutes. Is there to be a bit of late drama at the CKW Stadium in Castlecroft? Morfitt. Oh, spotted the run of Walker, but so did Forrest, unfortunately. James to try and clear. Emma Cross's clearance. Key stage now. As ball has found its way to Schofield. Strong challenge in by Ali Miller. I think that tells you a little bit about the tiredness, doesn't it? Now that that misplaced pass from Anna Morphy in in such a great position, um, she's been so consistent all all game really, and we've not seen anything like that from her. Schofield's delivery in, Price is headed to the edge of the box. Moncaster will let it run through. Tudor's ball intercepted. Holmes is clearance, and now here's the pace of Jade Cross. She's all on her own. Support will try and arrive. Jade Cross though. An opportunity to try and skip away. Palmer's now inside the penalty area. It might find its way all the way through to Lowry Walker, who has time to set herself. And in the end, Forrest had the numbers back there to deal with it. It's really unfortunate to play that. Uh, I think Jay Cross did brilliantly. It was a great ball. Lowry had a bit more time than maybe she thought and just couldn't quite get the connection on it. But I think you can just tell just these last few minutes, you can see that tiredness really creeping in now. Yeah, early in the game, we probably would have seen Jade Cross try and burst for goal herself. But she did actually really well, didn't she, to just wait for the support to arrive. Yeah, I did wonder whether she was going to drive. And, and I think possibly she would have done, but she just didn't quite get the run of the ball, whether she was going to take the defender on, bearing in mind she's on a yellow card. But, um, yeah, it's still brilliant play. I mean, the amount of energy, Jade Cross, she just doesn't stop, does she? Hasn't stopped for... Pretty much, what, 88, 89 minutes so far. She might still be called upon. Play an even bigger part. If there is to be something late to finish this inside the 90. Holmes. Time for Derby. We'll find Miller. Cross is calling for her to carry the ball forwards, and Miller is doing just that. Palmer making a run ahead of her. Miller will settle for the throw. How adaptable she's been as well, Ali Miller. Yeah, she's been fantastic, hasn't she, all afternoon? Uh, full of energy, uh, brave, getting in some great positions for her team. So, um, literally getting to that point now where you can see <laughs> I'm looking around and just seeing calf stretches left, right and centre. Um, it's, a, it's a tough one for the girls to take. A little bit of a breeze has picked up though, which will be more than welcome, I imagine. Some tired legs and tired minds out there. I think Darby. they've just got to keep concentrating, haven't they, now? I think the last few minutes of the game, there could be a mistake in, in either side, really. Clearance away, Holmes. She's done so often this afternoon. Held it up. Jay Cross will chase again. Cook back, and it was a little bit short by Cook to acquire. Again, just the, the effort of Jade Cross to put the pressure on. She's still getting into some great positions, isn't she, Jade Cross? She just really, really doesn't give up on anything. It was a great ball there from Jamila Palmer just to, just to set her away as well. Miller's throw in again to Jade Cross. Couldn't quite hold on to it, but here's Tammy George trying to find Palmer. For Holmes, who lined it up and just a bit too much swerve across it. 
was a nice con connection that wasn't it from uh, Summer, but a bit unfortunate really. So we go into added time at the end of the 90 minutes. George, oh Palmer couldn't quite collect it. Holmes again with the interception. Miller. Time maybe to produce something special in the final moments. Falls towards Cross. It's done brilliantly. That's support for Miller. Trying to get away from Cook. The assistant referee saying that didn't go out. And again, Jay Cross's energy forces a mistake. Yeah, well played, Jay Cross. <laughs> Her and uh, Cook have had a, a great afternoon. Miller with a throw. George had come short. It went towards Palmer. And that will be another Forest throw. Miller's header out of play. Forest working their way out of trouble. Look at the watch from Chloe Matthews. And how much more time is going to be added on? There wasn't many injuries this half uh, uh, as such. I mean, there's been a little bit of cramp, hasn't there? And obviously a couple of goals scored as well. So, I mean, I'd only be saying there's a, maybe a couple of minutes left at maximum. That'll be a Wolves throw this time. Oh, good work by Summer Holmes. The Forest with the three subs. Wolves with only the one. They are permitted to make five. From the nine who've been named. I mean, you could say that maybe is a positive for Wolves that they've got four more changes that they can make if um, tiredness really does play its part if they have to play another half an hour. Yeah, I wonder whether that went into the thinking of Dan McNamara just to say, let's hold it off and then we can throw on plenty of fresh legs at the start of extra time. And really blitz it. Accident closed off by Holmes again. Derby forwards. George, Cross will chase, Cross will challenge, still Jade Cross. It's closed off in the end by Cook. What a battle that's been this afternoon. Yeah, it was good defending by Cook in the end there. Miller, oh, a bit of tiredness, I think, from Ali Miller. Trying to hurry herself to get it into that danger zone. Well... It's been plenty of entertainment for this 90 minutes. We wait to see how much more we are going to get before the players get a little bit of a break and then head to extra time. Unless, unless Walker, just a heavy touch when she didn't need it. James with the interception. And there you go. Uh, Thoroughly fascinating 90 minutes, and this FA Cup tie is yet to be decided, Claire Aikman. Yeah, I think it's been a fantastic game, in, in fairness, and uh, Wolves have uh, really taken this game to Nottingham Forest, and I think they're unlucky not to have, have won it in the 90, really, but, I mean, Forest have had that one real clear-cut chance and scored it, and Wolves, Wolves have had quite a few and, and, and some great possession, but I think this will now give Dan McNamara the chance to to regroup and, and, and see how everyone is and see see who can hold off for the, the remaining period of time. Yeah, we, we spoke, didn't we, expecting Forrest to come out and be a little bit stronger at the start of the second period. And for five or ten minutes they were, but and they got the goal, but then it was about the character of Wolves' response. Yeah, definitely. And I, like I said before, I think that's the most impressive thing is that they've conceded early in the second half just after their team talk, and it, it can knock the stuffing out of you. And, and, and sometimes you expect Forrest to go on and maybe maybe score another but Wolves came back into the game and, and really got the game back together, got organised uh, and got back on it, which was fantastic. Um, credit to Naya Edwards. What a moment for the youngster. Oh, I'm so, so chuffed for her. Um, she's, she's such a great young player um, and it was such a good strike as well. Got into a fantastic position and um, uh, fantastic to manage to take the game to extra time. Well, Dan McNamara is in deep discussion with his players. Let's find out what Jen Anslow made of it all with Gemma Frith down at pitch side. 
Now, it's one all after 90 minutes. Jim, we didn't expect to be having you back here, but we've, of course, going to extra time now. What did you make of that second half? Much, much better performance. It was way more competitive, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah and it evened itself out. Um, they took the goal really well. It was un uh, We weren't expecting it, really. You know, we, we got back into it straight in the second half and they, they took it off us, really. And um, We did really well to come back into it, though. Naya worked really hard down the wing there and uh, managed to beat the keeper from wide. It was a fantastic goal, but that first one first, obviously it was disappointing to concede so soon after half-time. But do you think it spurred the goals on to motivate them to try and get one back? Yeah, the resilience is brilliant. I mean, um, if that had have happened later on in the game, it may have been a different result. But it we gave us gave us a lot of time, so it's probably good that if it was going to happen, it was going to happen just after half-time to give the girls a chance to get back into it. And you can see how um, fit our, our team are, you know. They've worked really hard there for 90 minutes, and it, it doesn't, you can't tell, you know. Um, they were getting cramped there towards the end and we were still running on so if anything we've had the better chances so you'd like to think it'd go our way. Fingers crossed and of course that goal from Naya was absolutely fantastic unfortunately she had to be subbed off shortly afterwards but her first goal of the season and what a goal it was. Oh it was fantastic I'm so pleased for her she's, <laughs> um, she's come up through the youth and she's done really really well it's not a natural position so you could say that mm -hmm. she might have been a bit more worried playing there today but she's such a confident uh, youngster and she's uh, such an athlete as well. So she's running up and down that wing really well and still had the strength to, to put it in. Definitely. And of course now, going into extra time, it's going to be so tiring for the girls. I mean, not only have they just played 90 minutes after not being able to play a match, a competitive match for four months almost, this is going to be really difficult for them. But is this the final push now to try and secure that win? Yeah, I think we've got it in our tank, if I'm honest. We've yeah. still got subs to make. Um, it's only Jamila that's come on. Yep. Um, so we've got the option to rotate there. But he's got a lot of faith in, in the fitness of the girls. And the girls are still quite confident there as well. And they'll be really honest with the manager if they feel like they need to come off, they will. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're going to pass back over to the commentary team now. So make sure you stay tuned for all of the action here in extra time and the possibility of penalties as well if it stays level. So stay tuned. I'll hand you back over now to Mikey Burrows and Claire Hakeman. Well, we talk about character that this Wolves team have shown to get themselves back into in that second period. They will have to dig deep into the wells of energy, the reserves of attitude to try and force a way through. It's not just about physical fatigue, but mental fatigue, I imagine, Claire Hegman. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they would have prepared themselves for... <laughs> for 90 minutes and um, it's a hell of a period of time to be playing when you've had four months off and I think fair play to the players, I think they've given a great account of themselves and that goes for both teams in terms of the way that they've dealt with uh, the game and I think the quality's been, been decent as well so um, I think it's now keeping that focus, nothing silly, keep it tight, the last thing you want to go and do is concede, I think heads will go down if, you know, if that's the case so we're hoping like, that, that maybe they get back settled, keep it nice and tight, and maybe the chances will come. I think they've dominated the game the game so far uh, in many parts, but Forrest is still a clear threat. I was trying to think of kind of likening it to having a cup final in the first game of the season, but then you would have had some pre-season warm-ups before that. This is completely different to anything anybody was experienced in football before. Yeah, I mean... Zoom calls, of three months of Zoom calls and then six days of training. It, it doesn't um, doesn't sound like quality preparation for your final, first and final game of the season, does it? But um, I think they've done a fantastic job and it's been a great advert for, for what a great side that, that Wolves women are. Well, it might not be the final game, of course. If they can find a way past this Nottingham Forest rear guard in the next 30 minutes. Keep that pressure up. Keep pushing forwards. And Dan McNamara talks about playing football in the Wolves' way. Well, his side have certainly done that this afternoon. Yeah, I think they've been a, a, a great advert for, for women's football. And, and also, you've seen that pride, determination, uh, bravery. We've, we've seen every a aspect today, and uh, it's been really fantastic to watch. So here we go. Extra time in the... FA Women's Cup, second round. It will be decided today. But which way will it go? Jade Cross. Looking for Larry Walker. No changes yet from Dan McNamara. 
And all the subs were out there in the big huddle. Yeah, I imagine they'll be getting some of the girls getting getting prepared, ready to come on. I, I, I very much expect some of the girls going to be struggling with a little bit of cramp um, in this period of time. And you will see some tiredness. I think that's totally understandable. Schofield. And here back from Naylor. Emma Cross. A good strength to keep her out. Naylor again, though. Onto Schofield, but across came Derby. Yeah, as well defended by Wolves. A good bit of play, though, there from Forrest. I think Wolves have just got to try and stay, like you say, mentally switched on, uh, not giving them any chances. And Anil with a throw. That's it back. Schofield, suspicion of offside. Wolves are certainly appealing for it. They're going to get a throw in anyway. Yeah, I think their line looked pretty decent there, Wolves. I think they definitely were, were hoping that one might be offside. But uh, I think... Now Wolves have just got to, like we said, keep it tight, try and get a bit of possession back on. Maybe use the legs of Tammy George here to continue to carry it forwards. And Larry Walker, who made that sensational run in that second half. Summer Holmes, who's been involved in so much, both attacking and defending. Yeah, she's good, just so composed in possession of the ball. Miller having a go! Oh, so close. So close from Ali Miller, and she knows it. Wow, what a goal that could have been. It kind of came from nowhere, didn't it, that really? She kind of cut in on her, on her left foot. It's not a stronger foot, I don't think, but um, it was a great effort that and got the, re got the keeper scrambling. Anything could happen, especially when players get so tired as well. Worth having a dig. More fit to take the corner. So many of the set pieces have been on the opposite side so far. This will be more of an outswing, and though it's hung up high to the far post, and the goalkeeper did really well. The keeper's done a great job of that, to be fair. Her handling's been superb all day. And the cross with the header. Palmer to challenge. And Walker wisely back to Beck Thomas. It was so frustrated that I get the clean sheet today. Barely. Oh, cross! Cross onto the loose ball, following in! The ball's going to roll over the line, and Wolves have scored! Jane Cross will get the congratulations! Oh. All her desire and effort has paid off in a special moment. Wolves 2, Forest 1, right at the start of extra time. Huge mistake in the Forest defence, but Jane Cross just simply would not give it up. Oh, it's what she's done all day, isn't it? It's so tough for Jay Cross. She really deserved that. I mean, the typical Jay Cross nicking in behind, a little bit of pace. She almost fooled the keeper by hardly connecting with it for it to go in. Well, we talked so much about the effort that she's put in this afternoon. And it's exactly the reason why she has now gone to 147 goals in 170 appearances. She's been the top scorer for the last five seasons, and that's her 13th of this season in 10 games. What a player. I mean, she's immense. She's uh, something else, and all day she's been running their defence ragged, so it's, it's richly deserved that she's managed to get on the score sheet herself. Here comes Walker. Anybody else on the field, that would have been an OK pass back to the keeper, but not when Jade Cross is on your shoulder. Oh, you, can, you can never relax when Jade's around. She's still chasing down the keeper now. I mean, some work rate. And almost the exact opposite of the start of the second half where Wolves knew they had a long time to come back into it. Now they've got a long time to try and hold on. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the good thing with extra time is that, we c you know, they can start to manage the game a little bit. They might, you might see a little bit of... Uh, it's slow and steady on taking those throw-ins and the little bit extras. Uh, so Wolves have got to manage this now and see this through. I think we get to half-time, we go again, have a, have a team talk from Dan and, and hope the girls can see it through in that second half. Yeah, game management is a beautiful phrase at times like these. Control it. There's more fits throw. We'll drop towards Walker. Challenged by Schofield. Tammy George in there again. One for Emma Cross at the other end. 
as one twin shows pace on one side. He was using her pace to make sure that went through to Bex Thomas. Big one forwards, Palmer. It's going to come towards Tammy George. She's got an option to her right hand side. Chose to go it alone. Unlucky from Tammy, isn't it there? I mean, I think Wolves have just got to now really keep it tight. I still think that they've got the momentum in this game, though. But obviously the tiredness is still there and Forrest are still going to be a threat. So they need to just, be, you know, keep it calm, nothing silly uh, and try and get some good possession in. You'll have to check out the Wolves' social media channels over the next few days because we've got an angle from behind the goal that we can't quite show you right now that... Jade Cross may have that goal taken away from her, which could be a really harsh moment, as I'm not sure she gets a contact on it. That's why it seemed to look, as we were watching, she looked like she slid and it almost fooled the keeper. But right. that is the case. That is, it was a decoy. So either way, she was very much responsible. I bet she won't even get an assist either, will she? I have to roll the footage back even further to see who played it. I think it will have to go down as an own goal, I imagine. The goalkeeper certainly didn't get a touch either. I don't care how it was scored, to be honest. As long as we went in the net, and if it sees us through into the next round, I'll be really happy. We are debating whether it might be credited to Anna Price, which would be wonderfully fitting <laughs> on this occasion for it. Oh, I'd love that. Before the game, the presentation from Jeff Shee is here watching, marking only the third Wolves women's player to reached 300 appearances. Dan McNamara was joking with Gemma Frith beforehand about her getting to 400. She might have stood more of a chance if the last two seasons hadn't been curtailed as they have been. Yeah, that's crazy to think how many appearances would have been in that spell, isn't it? Probably would have been getting close to being the record appearance maker by now. Yeah, no doubt. Whoever scored it. Wolves are in front. And they have something to protect now. Against Nottingham Forest from the division above. And the Summer Holmes challenge and some frustration that the free kick went against her. I think it was a good battle in there. I mean, I think it could probably could have gone either way, to be honest. I think Summer's given, a, given as good as she gets in there. But I think Wolves have just got to really keep concentrating now and, and make sure we don't give anything away silly. They have everybody back to defend this. I think Wolves are going to make a change relatively shortly afterwards as well. And rather harshly, Summer Holmes getting a yellow card, I think, as well. I'm not sure whether she's m she might have said something to the ref in there because there was nothing in that challenge that would warrant a, a yellow card at all. So defending to do. Rosie Axton, his goal right at the start of the second half, had given Forrest the lead. We'll try and launch this into the Wolves penalty area. Axton's delivery. It's high, it's hanging. But Beck Thomas underneath it. It's a tough ball, isn't it? That one, uh, you know, a, a real looping ball for Beck to keep her on in, in this pressure. Um, but um, it was a fantastic take from Beck. So we are trying to get confirmation for you as to exactly who is going to be the unfortunate Forest player that might get credited with an own goal. In the meantime, Wolves lead by two goals to one on Wolves TV, powered by Energy Angels. And this Wolves team have certainly been powered by something. What an effort they've put in. Yeah, I think the fact that they just keep coming back, it's, it's just fantastic that they keep coming back into the game. Um, and they're looking they're looking as strong now as they have done all game. It's a change being made. And Ali Miller, what a shift she's put in today. Yeah, she's been fantastic, hasn't she, throughout and, and, and really put her body on the line for the team. And she's 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 left it, left everything on the pitch there. But um, Amy Dickin, is this coming on? Um, she's a strong player, f former Forest player herself as well, so she'll be she'll be mega keen to get on the score sheet, I imagine. And all the effort that Jade Cross has put in, she's now going to go and play 
That's the right wing back. She's got lots left in her legs, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen Jade tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Amy Dickin is on and straight involved in the action. Yeah, nice little touch to get her off and running for Amy Dickin. Talking of off and running, it was in the direction of Jade Cross. And you, you may well like this, Claire Hakeman, that we are, our producers have worked out that it was Olivia Cook, who perhaps should have been sent off in the first half, that will be credited with the own goal. Uh, is that retribution, maybe? I don't know. But, hey, she, she's had a decent game, to be fair. Um, since, since that moment, her and Jade have had a, a real good battle in there all game, and, and she's kept going at that. But I think Wolves deserve the lead. If you look at possession and, and chances on goal, I think Wolves have uh, dominated in key periods of the game. So... Um, I think they deserved their lead. Yeah, I think this is Kelly Darby down at the moment. I think she was just caught. She cleared the ball forwards. There's quite a few out there stretching, maybe coming to get a drink. It's the intensity of the game as well. That's what's been, I think, one of the standout factors. That there just doesn't seem to have been any period across the the hundred or so minutes that we've played, that there's been any kind of lull, Claire? Yeah, well, I think it tells you a lot about how hard these girls have worked in the, off in the well, I'd say the off-season. It wasn't the off-season. It was the, you know, during lockdown, they've worked so hard on their fitness levels because it just hasn't stood out that they've been off for four months at all. Um, I've been really impressed and um, really, I thought maybe they'd be a little bit more rusty, but they, they really haven't shown that at all. So uh, it's, it's really impressive given they've had four months off and, and, and obviously they've, they've had six days to prepare as a squad for this game. Right, while there is a pause, we have already put up on social media, by the way, if you head to the Wolves Women pages to see the footage of that goal. Jade Cross chased in on Olivia Cook's back pass and the collision that went through. She might not officially get it, Jade Cross, but... She deserves a hell of a amount of congratulations. I think towards the end of the um, second half there, she, she tried a similar move, didn't she? Sneaking in behind uh, Olivia Cook and it, it didn't quite come off. It didn't quite run to her and the keeper did really well, but it was kind of a, a, a very similar situation there. And obviously the pressure that she put on and the position she got into really created that opportunity. So... Um, it's fantastic, and uh, uh, you know, if, if Wolves manage to see this this through, it'd be it'd be a fantastic result. At Wolves Women on social media, if you want to check out the replays of that goal, make sure you stay with us here. Wolves TV, by Wolves.co.uk, the Wolves app, and the official YouTube channel, powered by Energy Angels. This coverage of Wolves Women for the first time in our Wolves TV history. And who knows if they keep producing entertaining matches like this, we're going to have to get it down here more often. Let's hope so. That'd be fantastic. Walker. Horse towards Palmer. What a game Larry Walker's had as well. Hard to pick a man of the match at the moment, but she'd be right up there for me. I think there's a few, there's a few, isn't there? They just really haven't stopped. I mean, you got Jade Cross, Tammy George, James ran it out of play. <laughs> yeah, you could there's go through them all, couldn't you? It's quite a long list, isn't there? When we think about it, and Gally Miller, who's obviously come off. I mean, she's she's had great work right in there. Yeah, playing against a team from the division above when the the seasons were paused. Forest were in sixth place, mid-table, in the division above in the Women's National League Premier Division North, effectively step three. They were sixth in the table. They'd won four, drawn two and lost three, but they hadn't won in their last four matches. So it's so long ago that that kind of form doesn't really pay too much, really, when you consider Wolves were nine from nine. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think what we have definitely seen today is that you can see that Wolves could could definitely compete, easily compete in the, the division above. Um, I think they've done a fantastic job and they really um, have been the pick of the two sides today. James's throw, header away by Cross. 
Price was challenging Walker to clear. Dickon finding Palmer. And Palmer trying to set off, but Harkin back across in front. Now Tammy George trying to get on the end of things. Palmer's going to be offside, has to leave it. I tell you what, by the way, you talk about people chipping in and making big contributions. I've just spotted behind us, Claire, the chairperson of Wolves Women is actually washing up some cups. Ah, uh, she's, a, she's a legend, Jenny Wilkes. I mean, oh. talk about chipping in. No job too small for Jenny Wilkes I behind us. Jen, the, the, the contribution she's made to Wolves Women has been immense. George. It's unfortunate that Moncaster got back across in front of her. And late challenge by Jamila Palmer. I think there's definitely a bit, a bit of managing the game going on now, which is totally as it should be. But um, can't imagine there's long left in this half. Yeah, added time at the end of it. You're right, I don't. It's been maybe one or two little injuries, wasn't there? Just to add on a few seconds, I'm sure we'll see this ball launch deep. Harkins delivery came off Price. Holmes oh. was there. Oh, penalty! Oh, really unfortunate. Wolves trying to keep it out right at the end of this first period. I mean, there's not masses of complaints there, is there? But I'm, I'm kind of wondering, it was fired in. Could she have done much about that? Just seemed to skim off the head of Anna Price, didn't it? And caused problems. And Rosie Axton with a chance to try and level things up with probably the last kick of the first part of extra time. Up against Beck Thomas. And it's Axton to strike it and strikes it high and to the right and beats Beck Thomas. And this fascinating cup tie goes on. Wolves in front, right at the start of this period of extra time, trying to see it through to half time, couldn't quite do so. Forrest back on level terms and game on again. Oh, it's so disappointing when it's so late on, isn't it, to concede? And you're right, there didn't seem to be too many complaints, but. Maybe a touch of tiredness in that as well. Look, it really was the final kick. And such frustration. They've got to go again. They've shown already they can put the pressure on Forrest. And realistically, Forrest have had probably two efforts on goal in, in the entirety of the 105 minutes so far and scored them both. Yeah, definitely. And oh, it just, just feels so deflating, doesn't it, when... Uh, obviously, it's a gift for, with the handball. They have just just have had so few chances in this game that. I mean, um, look at that, Claire. Nineteen to three in terms of total shots. It tells an incredible story. I mean, in given that there's a, you know a division separating them, you would never guess uh, if you were watching this game for the first time. Raw, you'd expect that Wolves were the team in the the division above rather than the other way around. Technically. One shot on target, of course, the penalty <laughs> is slightly different in that. But 14 for Walls, seven corners to none as well. I mean, it tells you about the possession and the way that the game's gone, doesn't it? And that the stats are a true reflection of how, how the game really has panned out today. Quick turnaround as ever at half time in extra time. And this is the tricky period again, and I talk about the mental side of the game, Claire, where if you're Forrest now, you're thinking, we just got out of jail, we've been outplayed for the majority of it, now we can go and impose ourselves. Yeah, I think definitely. I think it, now is the time. Is We really don't want them to get on top of, the, uh, top of the game, and they might take the momentum of that penalty to take them forward. And, you know, the girls are going to be tired across the pitch, and... The pressure is on, isn't it, now? Last 15 minutes and, and see who wants this most. I think either side are going to make a substitution here. Bear with this while we work out who's gone off on either side. Looks like Tammy George might be going off for Wolves. Oh. 
So Tammy George being replaced. What a game she's had as well, Claire. Oh, she's been fantastic, hasn't she, throughout. We talk about energy levels and, you know, uh, Jay Cross, but uh, Tammy has been equally contributed to that. She's been all action up and down the pitch all game. I mean, if they've got the um, calculation on the, the value and the mi minutes and mi versus miles she's put in, hers will be phenomenal, I'd imagine. Looks like Kate Evans has come on for Tammy George. Here comes Jamila Palmer for Dickon. Didn't quite force that cross in. Kate Middleton has come on for Forrest, by the way. We will work out who she has replaced in a moment. Might well be Axton, you know. I think that's Axton up top, maybe. Get confirmation in a second. Dickon couldn't quite keep it in. I mean, Axton's their top goal scorer, and you yeah. can kind of see that, She's can't you, in the top. game. She's had two two chances, obviously won a penalty, but put both away very convincingly. So she's a massive threat. So the throw will go forwards. That comes off Axton. So still a couple more subs if needed for Wolves. Kate Evans trying to drive on. It came off O'Neill. Will be a throw. I mean, they've got 15 minutes now. I mean, Wolves just need to do nothing silly. Hope a, hope a chance will come along and, and hopefully they can take it. Derby will take the throw. Cross and Dickon were short. This is Evans. Quite hold on to it. Will be another Wolves throw, though. Palmer leaving it for Derby. Throw into Jade Cross. Didn't quite get the cross in, and Derby went flying in, and what a crunching challenge that was. And Jade Cross winning it again and winning a free kick, too. But the concern will be over Kelly Derby, who came off the worst for wear off a Crunching 50-50. Yeah, it was. It was a great tackle, wasn't it, that? Um, fantastic tackle down there. But uh, Jade did so well to pick up the pieces and managed to take it on to win yet another free kick. So, Wolves trying to press forwards. another chance for anamorphic so i think it's georgia hewitt who was the right back but we will check that there was replaced for kate middleton to come on a little bit more of an attacking change in the meantime more fit to whip this in again plenty beyond the far post I mean, we've, Wolves have had a lot of set pieces today. It'd be great to, to capitalise on w one of them and, and hope one of these deliveries finds a Wolves player at the end of it. Inviting gap towards the near post as well. Look at the space inside the penalty area. As Morfitt hangs it high to the far post and too high for everybody. And I do wonder with such an expanse of space there whether it's worth just playing a little short one. Yeah, I mean, the keeper's pretty strong, isn't, isn't she, in the air? So I, I, I wonder if their tactics are a little bit being to keep it away from, from the keeper because the handling has been so good. What a game so far. So I think it, I think it was Georgia Hewitt who was replaced and Hayley James dropped back a little deeper to allow Kate Middleton to come on. Here's Holmes. Across. Palmer. Awkward bounce. And Harkin wanting to see it out, but Palmer wouldn't give it up. 
And she needs some support and help and gets it from Holmes. And blocked off in the end by Moncaster. And Olivia Cook now has a bit of an issue inside the Forest penalty area. It's like a touch of cramp again, doesn't it? Well, both sets of players have given so much to this. You're almost in the realms now, aren't you, where neither side will be wanting to lose. That's how much you're going to be prepared to dig in and push forwards to, to try and steal it and stop it going to penalties. If you forest, you may be thinking, the luck's not been on our side so far. We'll take the spot kicks. I think it'd be such a shame, wouldn't it, to, to decide this game by, by penalties, given like the stats that are massively in Wolves' favour. But that's obviously not how football works, you know. We like, we like a bit of excitement, and, it, and it's definitely been a game that's kept us on our toes. Derby with a throw. There's Emma Cross. Looking for Dickon. He got the flick on, but nobody quite up there with her. Launched on. Walker was challenging. James through. Schofield on. Trying to get the strike away. And it was always going to roll past that post of Beck Thomas. Just started to move a little bit quicker for a moment or two. Yeah, I think Wolves were just caught slightly out, out of shape there. But, I mean, given the, the, the time we are in the game, it's kind of inevitable there's going to be the odd chance created. But... It was a fairly straight ball through, and, and, and lucky enough, it ran past Beck's post. Header on. It's causing more issues. Forrester brought on Rachel Brown there, holding him midfield as well. Plenty of changes have been made. Sydney Naylor has gone off. Everything has been done to try and force a way through. This is James under pressure from Walker. Walker couldn't quite steal the ball back. James with time to set herself. Emma Cross read that really well. Anna Price, strong challenge in on Dickon. Forrest beginning to take control, Claire. Yeah, I was just going to say, you can see the tiredness, can't you, now? You can see the game's getting a little bit scruffy, but I think, in fairness, the girls have done so well so far to keep, to keep the game flowing as it has been. James on, Schofield. Support from Brown. Put in by Evans. Good header by Morphy. Just a bit of a tired clearance. Get it away, get it downfield. I think if you got Jade Cross up there, that would have been probably a decent ball for her to play with, but... Jade's obviously doing a lot of defensive work now down here. She's slotting in almost at right back. So um, you can see how, how we're a little bit backs against the walls now. And Forrest are finish this, finishing this game quite well. Axton. Done well to dig out across. And Beck Thomas got a really good touch to that. Important touch as well. That's a great ball into the box, to be fair. Derby forwards. Palmer to put pressure on. We'll drop for Dickon. Support from Holmes. Now Jade Cross. Summer Holmes again. Wanted to try and switch the play. Maybe it spotted the run of Evans. Price finding Walker. And Walker spotted something. Spotted a choir off a line. Would have been a hell of a goal if it had come off, but... Um, she's got a great stroke on Larry Walker. I mean, you, yeah, like we've just said, you can see this, the tiredness is creeping in, and I think it's totally understandable. The, the players, players are struggling, and 
you just hope a mistake doesn't finish this game and, 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 and one of the, either team capitalises. Is there to be another goal? Or are we heading towards a penalty shootout? Moncaster's ball intercepted by Derby. Palmer couldn't quite collect it. Tudor forwards intercepted by Price. Strong challenging with Moncaster, too strong for Chloe Matthews' liking. I think you can just see the, the exhaustion now, can't you? That, that players are just struggling. Yeah, it's after so long out, so long without playing, and having to get through the intensity of this and adrenaline plays its part early on. Oh, it'll be sheer exhaustion now and, and trying to keep your concentration just to sit, see the game through. I think yeah. the last thing you'd have wanted was extra time. Well, the way the game has swung as well. Forrest going in front, Wolves getting that equaliser, then getting themselves in front at the start of extra time, then being pegged back by a penalty. And the ball comes off James and will be a goal kick right at the end of that first period. I mean, as a neutral, if you'd have been a neutral, I think it's been a fantastic game to watch. Good advert for women's football uh, for both teams. The game swung both ways, like you say, but um, I think it's just getting to that point now where, where the game, people, we're just trying to see the game through and people are trying to keep their concentration levels high and yeah maybe some starting to think about penalties too yeah it'd be interesting to see if if there had been any even opportunity in six days to practice penalties you can't do that via zoom <laughs> <laughs> you, may, you maybe can but the Standard of goalkeeper might qu not quite be up to the same standard. M maybe on FIFA? Well, FIFA yeah. practice, you know? Always been a pro Evo man myself. James with a throw. Price. Evans touch. Evans again. Trying to set it away. And balls have switched and... There's a decent call from you, Claire, a moment or so ago, suggesting maybe the pace of Jade Cross up top might make something different happen. Dan McNamara clearly agrees with you. Yeah. I think that was a nice little spell of play there for Wolves and um, a bit unfortunate the ball didn't, didn't run down the line. Offside flag is up against Schofield, but Derby had won the header anyway. I think if you end up hitting the ball long, you really need, do need Jade, Jade Cross up there to, to spin off the pieces. And I mean, that's how the second goal came about, isn't it? So um, I can see why you'd switch it around a little bit. Derby to launch this forwards. Anna Price just telling her to hold on. So she can join those in and around the edge of the penalty area. And Derby will hit it in her general direction. Drops to Palmer. Couldn't quite set for it. Summer Holmes read that danger absolutely brilliantly. It's a brilliant interception that. I mean, if they'd have got through there and Summer didn't make the tackle, I think it was going to be a three-on-three -three at the back. And uh, with tired legs, obviously anything could happen. Another who would be right up there in terms of player of the match for me. The performance she's put in, protecting that back line, but also getting involved in the forward areas. Jamila Palmer, I think, is going to get a yellow card here just for the, the late challenge that she made when Forrest was trying to break away. Hasn't quite had the impact that we may be expected from it. No, I think it's tough as well, isn't it? Coming on as sub, um, uh, myself, and it, I always found it difficult. It's difficult to impact a game as, as a substitute. Um, but I'd still never say never with Jamila. There still could be a chance around the corner. Final minute of extra time. And then we're heading towards penalties. Time, 
An outcome that neither side would have really wanted. Unless Forrest, an offside flag here. Yeah, I think so. And I think, to be honest, Wolves will be a little bit disappointed given the stats on the game that maybe they've not seen it through in, in both extra time and in the 90 minutes. But um, that's football, isn't it? And keeping the concentration and that the, the psychology of penalties when you, you're really tired and that's, that, that, that's going to be tough for them to take. Thank Thomas to launch it forwards. Direction of Evans. There's one in the air by Brown for Forrest. James will just launch it up. Derby's header. Helped on again. The chase is on for Middleton. And Emma Cross just lost her footing. Launched in by Tudor. Away by Morfitt. Axton. Great desire to get in there and close it down. James's ball through and cleared behind by Summer Holmes. Oh, I think she's sliced it there, hasn't she? She's tried to clear it out for a throw, and I think tiredness has, has sliced it out slightly for a corner. So, well, they haven't had many, if any at all, Nottingham Forest in this game. I think this might be their first one. They are threatening now. Right at the end of extra time. Axton's delivery. Well, got brilliant palm away by Beck Thomas. Tudor will put it back into the danger zone. Summer Holmes with the header away. And there we go. They cannot be separated in 120 minutes of football. What a show Wolves and Nottingham Forest have put on. And now it will come down to those oh-so-dreaded penalty kicks. Oh, the, the, you know what? It's been such a fantastic game, and I think if you read too much into it, the fact that obviously whoever goes through gets another game, and whoever doesn't, th their season's kind of done. I think that's it's harsh to end it on penalties, isn't it? But especially when Wolves have done so much to win the game. Certainly, when you look at those stats that were just up on screen, let's take a look at them again. Twenty shots to Nottingham Forest four. 14 on target to one, seven corners to one as well. Wolves, if they don't make it through, will not want to see that. No, I think, I think it, I mean, although, you know, before the game, Dan was very much uh, saying it's about enjoying the game. I think when, when you see the stats like that, they'll be disappointed they've not seen it through. But, I mean, they're a division apart. They've done a fantastic job. Wolves have created some fantastic chances. Uh, just a bit unlucky, really, um, in the end that he hasn't seen it through. That penalty at the end of the uh, first half of extra time really probably made the difference there. If you're Beck Thomas as well, see a little conversation going on for her. 30 years of age, made a Wolves debut in 2007, spent seven years playing at West Bromwich Albion. Two seasons with Forrest as well. Could be a special moment for her. She's a quality keeper, Beck. I mean, she's, she was she was a, a young player at the club as well, so I played with Beck back in the day. Um, but she's a, a fant fantastic player, and, I mean, when it comes down to penalties, it's just a lottery, isn't it, I think? And there's a lot of pressure on all the girls, those that take and and, and, and those, are what, those that are obviously facing the penalties as well. So uh, I think it's, it's just one of those, and it's definitely a bit about psychology, like we spoke about, the mental strength of... Uh, seeing it through and, and a, a lottery as to who might win the game now. Ordinarily, in a, a normal season, would you have practised them very much? Uh, p possibly in, in, in a normal season. Uh, in the build-up to uh, maybe cup games, we've probably we've practised penalties sometimes. I mean, in the six-day period that they've had, this might not have been at the forefront of their mind to think about penalties. But, I mean, I don't know whether they have or haven't been practising. I know uh, over the times, Perks has taken penalties um, and also Jade Cross as well. Um, used to be one of the players that has stepped forward. I'm sure Jamila's got the confidence to step up and, and, and take a penalty as well. I mean, it's tough. Uh, for me, I always tried to avoid it like the plague. I never wanted to take a penalty. <laughs> I'd take my shin pads off, my boots off, and, and do anything not to take a penalty unless I could help it. So I was going to say, my next question was going to be, have you ever been involved in one? I've been involved in a few, but but actually never take one. I think it managed to never get far enough down the line for me to, to get involved. But 
um, yeah, no, penalties are not for me, but fair play to any player that steps up there today in this kind of game and, and takes a penalty. I think there's a lot about that, isn't there, the people that have got the confidence to step up and, and have a go at it. Well, here we go then. He'll come down perhaps to a story of who will become a hero. There's always going to be a villain. Somebody will always have to suffer the heartbreak and agony of missing. But it will come down to a battle of those two goalkeepers too. And anamorphic. It looks like he's striding forwards to take the first one for Wolves. A lot of pressure on her shoulders, Claire Hakeman. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that first penalty is an important one, isn't it? Uh, get, gets you off and running. So here comes Morfit to step up left-footed. Oh, smashes it through. What a great penalty. You could hear a pin drop then, right? Absolutely. Just that moment. We talked in the game about her left foot and the power she's had in terms of set pieces. It really was a case of just put your foot through it. This will be Rachel Brown. Try and level things up for Nottingham Forest. Up against Beck Thomas. It's Brown. Oh, rolled it casually into the corner. Yeah, I don't think Beck could have done anything about that right in the corner. Lowry Walker. Real impressive performance. She went on an incredible run in the second half that was so unfortunate not to end in a goal. Just such a long walk up, isn't it, when you're taking a penalty, that pressure. Nine goals this season, 31 in her Wolves career. No more important strikes, perhaps, than this. Lowry Walker yeah, finds the bottom corner. It's a great Wolves penalty. maintain the advantage. A great finish right into the corner. The keeper went the right way, but a decent amount of power through. That couldn't do anything with it. Lindsay Harkin, the Forest captain. Came forwards quickly there. Trying to get on with it. Didn't want to make that long, slow walk from halfway. Harkin against Thomas. Harkin strikes it back off the other side of the crossbar. And it's a miss. Advantage Wolves. Oh, they've got to capitalise on this now. Uh, it'd be great. Jamila Palmer looks like she's stepping up for the next one, and this is a big penalty, isn't it, psychologically, I think? So, Jamila Palmer to extend Wolves' advantage. Palmer smashes it straight down the middle. Three from three for Wolves. And there's that power. So, Jamila, great strike through the ball. I don't think any keeper would have saved that. Now stepping forward is May Moncaster. Real pressure moment, this. And then seeing Lindsay Harkin rattle back off the crossbar. Moncaster to step up and strike it, and strikes it well into the bottom corner. Three, two. Alex Dickin is racing down there. Amy Dickin. I just want to take her time. Wants to get on with things. And strikes it low and finds the bottom corner. That was such a rush, that penalty wasn't it? But fair play, she slotted it in the corner. I bet she's happy it's over and done with. And she's put real pressure now on Hayley James. Four two. Have to score. Hayley James to keep the shootout going. It's James to step up right footed and finds the bottom corner. And Forrest stay alive. And now, Anna Price. Only the third woman 
in Wolves history to make 300 club appearances will step forwards to send her team into the third round of the FA Cup. Fifty-six goals in her Wolves career. It's Price. No, it's over the top. Oh, unlucky, Perksy. Unlucky, mate. Oh, she's so unfortunate. I mean, that's the toughest penalty to walk up and take, isn't it? Rosie Axton will step forwards, having scored one already in extra time. Nottingham Forest top scorer. Unless if she misses, well, Beck Thomas can save. And then we've got... Wolves will be heading through. If she scores, we go to sudden death. It's effectively sudden death now. Can Beck Thomas produce something special? No, finds the corner. It's a great penalty, isn't it, that, to be fair? It's almost identical to the one she took in the game as well. Derby to take this one now. Making the long walk forwards. It means so much to so many. Even up here, Claire Hankman stepping from side to side. It's nerve-wracking, this is, I tell you. This is against her former club as well. I'm sure she'll really be desperate to score. Yeah, former Nottingham Forest captain, Kelly Derby. Against Aguirre. Derby. Oh, what power. Great strike. Fantastic placement as well. I mean, a penalty like that, you're wondering how she didn't get into the top five. And now, pressure on again. Olivia Cook striding forwards. Scored an own goal. Could have been sent off. Maybe should have been sent off. Now has to score to keep Forrest in the shootout. Cook against Thomas. It's Olivia Cook to strike it and it's saved by Beck Thomas. What an incredible victory for Wolves women to get themselves through to round three for the first time since 2015, knocking out Nottingham Forest from the division above. They dominated throughout the entire 120 minutes. They found themselves behind in a second half. They needed a special goal from Naya Edwards to get them back on level terms. Jade Cross's pressure had given themselves the advantage of the start of extra time. A penalty levelled it up. But they kept their nerve. They kept their composure. And after four months of inactivity, a second season cruelly cut short when they surely would have been heading for a title and promotion. This season continues thanks to that save from Beck Thomas. Wow, oh. Claire Hakeman. It's a fantastic save from Beck there to, to, to send the girls through into the next round. And um, I'm so chuffed for them. They've, they've absolutely dominated there. They've took the game to them throughout. They're unlucky not to win it in 90 then at the end of extra time. Uh, so to see it through again, that shows the resilience of these girls. And uh, it's a fantastic, fantastic display all day. So many heroes out there. Beck Thomas, of course, will get the headlines. But as we've spoken about in commentary, there were uh, almost 11 people who could have got player of the match today. Oh, totally. And I think you can see from the girls, it's almost, it's, it's emotional. Like, you know, they've seen themselves through to another game. So they've got the, the game next week against uh, Watford or MK Dons at, at, um, uh, at their place. So they're straight into the next round of the FA Cup and they should be flying. They should be full of confidence. Right, let's head down and get some immediate reaction. Dan McNamara is with Gemma Frith. Congratulations, Dan. It went right down to the wire there. But how much does that win mean? Quite emotional, to be fair. Um, those them girls deserve it. That group. I, I talk all the time about moments in football, and we've been denied cruelly time after time after time with, uh, with moments, but. You know, that's just, that's just a, absolutely 
unbelievable for, for those for that group. Um, I think, we, listen, the penalties is great for people sat at home watching, but we just played the played Nottingham Forest off the park. I thought it would have been a travesty if we hadn't gone through there today. Um, so yeah, I, I'm quite emotional. <laughs> I can really see how much it means to you. And of course, the girls have put in so much effort today after not playing a match for four months, playing 90 minutes, then extra time, and then winning on penalties. You must be so proud of them. Yeah, I, look, it's, it's, you know, there's th things happen in the first half and you think to yourself, is it going to be your day? You know, it's um, big moments, big moments make big games. And, and the girls could have shied away from that. I think, you know, it, that could have had a real impact on, on how they went forward. But... You know, they rose to the occasion again and they keep doing it. They keep getting knocked down and they keep getting back up and putting performances in like that. I thought they were absolutely incredible from, from one right the way through to the girls who sat in the stand. So I'm just delighted for them. And there's been, of course, some great goals today as well. Um, the first one from Nia Edwards, the equaliser in the second half, and then a second goal as well, which is after a great effort from Jade Cross, but unfortunately has gone down as an own goal. Are you proud of their efforts today as well? Yeah, listen, Nia, Nia's, uh, Nia was meant to go out to America in the summer and, and that got delayed. Obviously, everything's been put on the back burner due to yeah. COVID and, you know, that's why she's in the side. She produces moments like that, you know. But I don't think it's any individual today. I, I, you know, Jade's done fantastic. She always works hard and, and gets us and creates us stuff up front. But I just think from, from front to back, I thought they were absolutely incredible uh, and they really do deserve to be uh, in the next round and, and on the way to Watford for for next week I think it is yeah well talking about that next match well, what do the next few days and weeks look like for you now well it, it's one of them because of the nature of, of the of the competition and how it's laid out today uh, this season sorry it, you don't really you can't really plan so um, you know I, I, listen I, I didn't arrange a friendly next weekend and I didn't didn't arrange a friendly next weekend because I, I believe in the group and I believe that they'd get a result today so we kept that free uh, and, and, and now as I said I'm just absolutely delighted I'm delighted for all the girls all the staff and and everyone that sat at home, because you know it, it, this this crowd absolutely full, it would have made it even more of a, a memorable occasion. But um, you know, I just hope that everyone's at home is as proud as I am tonight. Well, I can tell you've had thousands of people watching live today, so they have been cheering you on from home. And just quickly to finish, a note, of course, that the league has finished for this season, unfortunately. But you have applied for upward movement still. How much would it mean for the girls to also end this season with a potential promotion? Well, yeah, look, it's, again, moments in football. We wanted to do it properly. But as we've just proved once again there, this group needs to be playing in Tier 3. You know, yeah. they, they are worthy of a place in Tier 3. Yeah. Uh, so I, I just hope that further backs the cause. The powers that be will deal with that. I'm, I'm just concentrating on the football and, and trying to deliver a best, best I can to the girls. So hopefully the club will back us. You've seen today, you know, the, the fantastic that we're on Wolves TV for the first time. Fantastic we've managed to put on a performance like that. Jeff, C, Jeff Shee and his, his family are sat in the stand. Can't thank him enough for all his support. So the club is just is flying in an amazing direction. And I've just got to thank everybody. Uh, but most of all, thank those girls out there because they're the ones that I've been delivering again today. It's been absolutely incredible. Congratulations again, Dan. And go and, uh, go and enjoy that win. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Thank Cheers. you so much. Thank you. And thank you all to everybody that has tuned in today as well. I'm going to throw back to Mikey Burrows to end today's stream. Well, Dan McNamara, Claire Hakeman, looking and sounding like a man who'd been through every single emotion possible over the course of the last couple of hours. Yeah, it was that kind of game, wasn't it? It, it kept changing. One side out was on top and then the other. And obviously it was just all action and... The quality on display, though, from the girls, particularly the Wolves girls, I thought the, the stats were totally in their favour. I think they dominated possession um, in ma major parts of the game and um, really impressive the amount of quality that they came back to show when they've been off for four months. Yeah, we talk about, you know, we know that they're hoping that promotion will be given. They arguably have done enough on the pitch across the last two seasons to have earned it anyway. But in terms of sending a message against the team from the division above, they've clearly shown today that... They can more than compete in that division up. Yeah, 100%. I mean, if, if you were a neutral watching that game with no information, I think you'd have picked out Wolves as being the team that, that sat in the higher division. Uh, that's how convincing that they were. Um, and I think that'll give them every confidence going into next week's game because, again, next week's game is uh, Watford and MK Dons both sit in the uh, equivalent division of Nottingham Forest. So, uh, again, they're going to challenge themselves again and, and, and compete with the team at the higher level. And uh, I think the standards that, the standards that they've shown... Uh, 
just shows that they're, they're, they're ready to compete on that level and, and I think they'd match any team in that division. And having had this game, obviously they'll need time to recover, but having had this game and a bit more training could be see even more from them next yeah, week. Yeah, I think they'll be full of confidence. I mean, I think like the, the little bits that we picked out in the game in terms of the amount of corners that they had, but, but with not a lot of end product, they'll have a little bit more time to work through their set pieces and, and the elements that maybe they weren't so happy with today. But fitness levels-wise and performance and determination and uh, everything on those levels was fantastic. Let's get a bit more reaction from pitch side and head back down to hear from Gemma Frith. I'm joined now by Kelly Darby. Now, Kelly, I'm sure you're feeling absolutely fantastic after that win. How much does it mean? Yeah, I think uh, the, the scenes at the, air, the end there show exactly what it means for, for us as a group. Um, we've worked hard. We've had three and a half months waiting for a competitive game, and I think every girl showed it on the pitch today. And then, obviously, the, the, the end then, when we've all gone in and you know congratulated Beck saving that penalty um yeah emotions are high <laughs> I can imagine and also uh, you must be exhausted I feel like after not playing a match for so long putting in so much effort really is an, an absolutely incredible performance yeah we've all um, we've worked really hard over the last three and a half months um whether it, you know on our own which is, yeah. is always difficult you're playing a team sport but the last three and a half months you, you know you've got to go out and you've got to do that slog on your own but again I think you can tell today every single person has done that and I think that's shown, and I think that's really carried us over the line today. And of course, the winning penalty came from yourself against <laughs> your former team as well. Yeah. How much of a moment was that for you in your career? Yeah, it was brilliant. Like I said, I was, I was the sixth penalty taker, so you know, there, there was a chance I weren't going to take one. Um, but this, it just shows that how together this team is. Um, I've stepped up, and you know, it's always nice to score against your old club. I've got a lot of respect for Forest. Yeah. Um, I like what they're doing. They're, they're obviously pushing for you know top spot in the in the tier three. Um, but yeah, it's always nice to get the winning goal. Um, and then, like I say, Beck did all the hard work at the end, uh, saving the penalty. So credit goes to her. And of course, now, obviously, that win against Nottingham Forest, they are in the league above you in, um, in the league system. How much of an opponent, they must have been a really difficult opponent today. How much does it mean being able to win against such a strong team? Yeah, again, I, you know, I keep, I keep repeating myself, but the desire and the, uh, the motivation that the girls show... Um, has, has won that game for us today because Forest are a very good setup. Yeah. Um, always have been, and, and to be honest, they're getting better and better with each season. So for us to go out and not only win but match them, yeah. and in, in certain parts outplay them, in my opinion, yeah. um, was, was really big for us. And I think now, if that's not enough motivation to kick on in the FA Cup, I don't know what is. Well, congratulations again, Kelly. Absolutely fantastic performance today. And everyone is cheering you along from home. So well done, and go and enjoy the celebration. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, thank you all for joining us today. What a fantastic win here at the CKW Stadium. It's been an absolutely glorious day and perfect, perfect win. Looking forward to that next match. And if you want to keep up with everything Wolves Women, then make sure you follow them on social media and stay tuned for more information on that next FA Cup fixture. We'll see you again soon.